You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Thunderbolt. CSU Pueblo taking on Western Colorado today. It's the RMAC opener here at home for the Thunderwolves. Last week coming off a, a tough loss in overtime at Grand Valley State. Western Colorado, they come in at 2-0. and They've got two wins over a couple of Lone Star opponents. Uh, week one over West Texas A&M, and then last week over University of Texas Permian Basin. So uh, Joe, it shapes up to be a great RMAC opener. Yeah, you, the Lone Star Killers versus the... The, we feel really good after ourselves about a loss. Thunderwolves. I, I we were saying off air how good we felt. That might be the best I've ever felt after a loss since they brought back the program in 2008. Since you Pueblo left it all on the line in Grand Valley State, we were there. It was one of the best atmospheres we'd ever seen, and it was a great college football game. It was fun to watch. It was fun to broadcast. Colorado State University Pueblo played its tail off, being down 21 to nothing and taking it to double overtime in an exciting, good football game against a great opponent. So that's what I'm looking forward to today, see how they bounce from that, take that momentum of playing well, but just missing out against a team that you know you're going to have to bring it. Well, one of the things we were most worried about, even the day after watching everybody limp around in the uh, on the tarmac there at the, the airport in the terminal, I guess we weren't actually out on the tarmac, but we were in the terminal, and we thought, man, are these guys going to be all right for this week? But as it turns out, only one uh, really big miss coming into the game. Yeah, and when you say really big, it's 6'7", uh, 230, Cody Ramming, defensive lineman. He was pretty banged up in that Grand Valley game. But Reggie Retzloff, the wide receiver who caught the touchdown to send it into overtime on the last play game, is dressed and healthy, as is Dominic Finney, the other defensive lineman who was kind of banged up in that Grand Valley game. So... One guy um, out for the for, for at least today, Cody Ramming, and that uh, that thins out your defensive line, which is already just a, a, you hope a, you have enough bodies. Well, we should mention Jamar's the RV. He's out for the year. He broke his ankle, so he had surgery. So that's the second ankle injury the Thunderbolts have suffered this year at the wide receiver position. But uh, he wasn't a starter. He was kind of the return guy. He got hurt on the first play of the game last week on a return. Actually got caught up in the wash blocking but he is done for the year but they hope to get a medical re red shirt for him and get him back uh, a year from now on the rehab guy we were watching Finney uh, Joe as you mentioned we were wondering how he was going to be able to play just looking at his calf it was kind of a nasty mess uh, after the ball game but uh, evidently rub some good dirt on it think about the worst bruise you've ever seen <laughs> and then think of it as an entire side of your calf yeah and that's but I just watched him warm up and he was jumping up and down like he was a school kid out here yeah so he's ready to go and the one thing about Dominic Finney is he's just tough yeah he's that kind of guy you want in the fight because he don't care he's just tough well he was kind of bragging about how he was kicking the other guy's butt during the game Paul well, all was telling us about yeah, yeah the guy the, the offensive lineman he said I own this guy yeah, so, it, and uh, when you look at him, you can see how he could own somebody. That guy, he just hey, he's country strong. He kind of looks that way, doesn't he? He's that Tony Campton refrigerator, yeah. <laughs> just thick, you know. And then he's and he has the mentality to back that up. Exactly. And that's the kind of mentality CSU Pub is going to need today across the board. Is that tough? Don't take any gruff attitude from Western State. Well, the last couple of years, Western Colorado has had the Thunderwolves number. Remember, CSU Pueblo never lost to him. And then uh, coming in here, the last two years couple of really tough defeats uh, last year 17 to 10 here at the Thunderbolt the year before uh, the RMAC title was on the line for Western Colorado and they beat the Thunderbolts 13 to 6 so as you can tell by those scores that's if the score is in the teens or 20s you think advantage Western Colorado Thunderbolts if the more points that are scored the more likely it's the Thunderbolts winning and, and offense has not been a problem for CSU Pueblo this year they've averaged 38 40, 42 points a game and they put up 49 in Grand Valley, 48 against Grand Valley. And that's not been a problem. Chance Fuller has played at a high level. The court, transfer quarterback from Fort Hayes State, he has taken control of the CSU Pueblo offense and, and made them electric. He's got a great bevy of receivers. He's got a stable of running backs. The offensive line, which we thought was going to be a question coming in because it's fairly new with two freshmen playing, true freshmen playing, uh, they've kind of started already to gel a little bit, and it's been kind of fun to watch. All right, we'll come back after this timeout. We'll talk to the head coach, Phil Vigil. That all comes your way next. It's all part of the Thunderwolves pregame show on Fox Sports Pueblo. 
And welcome back to the Thunderbolts pregame show. And joining me now, head coach Phil V. Hill. And Phil, we've uh, made it to the meat of the schedule, I guess, a conference opener against Western State, and a very tough opener it is. Yeah, they, they're a very, very well coached football team. They've got really good athletes. They, they never hurt themselves. That's the biggest thing with, with Western Colorado. Um, they, they put themselves in positions to win football games consistently. And, and, you know, you look at the history of this game between CSU Pueblo and Western Colorado, it's, it's been a battle. And it's been a battle going back to 2014 when they won the national championship here. And so um, we have our hands full with Western Colorado. I know they're going to be very well coached. They're going to be hungry. And um, we're going to have to play our best. Yeah, one thing, they're never really flashy, I guess you'd say, but they're just so darn efficient. They're gritty. They're just tough, gritty kids. And um, they know how to play the game. And, and I mean, defensively, they're going to move and they're going to blitz and they're going to play every coverage in the book. And offensively, they, they take care of the football and they, they have some explosive playmakers on the edge and their tailback. And um, we, we, we're going to have to we're gonna have to put together a, a really good plan and, and execute that plan. You kind of beat me to it. It seems like they have gotten a little bit more explosive. Before, they're kind of a plotting team, it seems like. But the last couple of years, they're starting to get some guys in the right positions. Yeah, I mean, shoot. Uh, Austin Eckler went there. He was pretty. Well, <laughs> he's pretty explosive. That was one. <laughs> <laughs> no, they 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 have some guys. They you know their number two uh, is a receiver for him. Is a really good football player. Number one, their tailback that I mentioned already is probably their most dynamic athlete. Uh, their quarterback is a is very athletic as well. He's a first year starter for him. He's a junior college kid that came in and he can run the ball. He can throw the ball. And so um, you know we're. We, we we gotta we gotta find a way to stop the run defensively. That's that's going to be the biggest thing. Find a way to stop the run, and then let our DBs, who I feel like are, are some of the best in the country, go to work on these receivers. Well, I thought defensively, your ball club after the first few series in the game really started to take control of that ball game last week. They did a really good job, you know. And and coach coach Foskey made some adjustments defensively, and um, you know went from a four one box to a four two box, and and I think that was the kind of turned the, the tide for us defensively. We started spying the quarterback, and um, it really made them throw to win, which that's not who they want to be. And uh, and so we were able to get some stops, and um, shoot, they only scored seven points on us in the second half. So Let's talk about the strength of their ball club. I think historically it's been defensively. I mean, they're just able to shut people down. Coach Auer, their defensive coordinator, does a phenomenal job. Um, he – the, the defenses that he runs are direct reflections of him. He is wiry, wiry, excuse me. He is uh, tough. He he is an old school guy, um, and those guys believe, and he has them playing at a very very high level. You look at, you know, what they've been able to do against two really offensive juggernauts in, in the Lone Star Conference in UTPB and West Texas. I mean. I think they're only giving up, I think, average of maybe 16 points a game. And so um, he has those guys playing at a very high level. They, they kind of pride themselves on, on being able to confuse you and, and make sure that you are, uh, you know, not comfortable back there, I think would probably be the best way to put it. But he does a great job with the defense, and, and we're going to have to we're going to have to control us. I think offensively, we got to flip the script on them. You know, we, we they're, they're built around putting the offense on their heels. Well, we want to do that to them. And so we got to find a way to, to get them on their heels and get them, um, you know, thinking. And, and if they're thinking, they're playing slow. I guess that goes without saying, need a better start this week than last week at Grand Valley. Those first three possessions, three and outs. I'm sure you're looking for something more efficient this week. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we, it, we can't. We can't wait till the second quarter to get settled in offensively. We, we got to start hot. We got to start fast, and that's kind of what I've challenged our entire team on. We have yet to put a, a full game together, offensively, defensively, and special teams. And so, that's the goal: is to start fast this week and, and play a complete game, regardless of what the scoreboard says. Play as hard as you can, as fast as you can, for as long as you can, and don't worry all the time. I guess uh, passing is always great, but I think this is the ball game where you think, like, hey, we got to run the ball a little bit. Yeah, we've got we've got really talented tailbacks. Uh, last week was a little bit a little bit unique just because of who we were playing and how good their front seven was. We want and need to be able to run the football. I mean, especially if we want to make it into the playoffs. Uh, you're playing and going to be playing in cold weather. You can't you can't just bank on being able to throw the ball for 350 plus every single every single game. And so we've got to find a way offensively to to establish the run, especially early, and and let Keon and and some of our tailbacks go to work. 
I'm sure atmosphere-wise, too, you're looking forward to this because Western had a lot of Colorado kids on this team, so there's going to be a pretty big presence for their fan base here. Of course, the Thunderwolves fan base is going to be a – should be an exciting day. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get back home. It's always good to be home, you know, and, and uh, I'm excited. Hopefully we get a great crowd out here and, and get ourselves a nice little home field advantage and make it as tough on the Mountaineers as we possibly can. All right, good luck today. Thank you very much. Thunderwolves head coach Phil Vigil back with the starting lineups, the opening kickoff. It all comes your way next on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And welcome back to the Thunderbolt. Jim Brooks along with Joe Servi. Benny Bash, our producer and engineer today of Thunderwolves football. Bands starting to make their way out on the field. It's all part of the pregame pageantry here. Just a gorgeous day. Good thing it wasn't yesterday. It was, it was rainy all day yesterday. It would have been a sloppy mess to play football, but today it's turned out perfect, Joe. Absolutely. We were in the – we'll make our way through the tailgate because we got to go get free food. <laughs> and, and But we also like to say there's – there's a series of people out there who tailgate every week, yeah. and it's great to see them. They're enthusiastic. It wasn't as many as I thought, maybe because of the 2 o'clock start, but I think they'll be here for the game, but they might not have been the pregame like they normally would be. All right, this uh, game, looking at Western Colorado, Joe, coming in. Uh, you know, Phil Veal kind of gave me the business there. said, well, yeah, they did have Austin Eckler at one time, but – yeah, that, that, that's why that was kind of an anomaly. But normally their ball club is built kind of on a close to the vest. Don't screw things up. Let the defense keep us in the game. Then we'll make a play or two and win the ball game. This year seems a little different. They've got a couple of guys that can, uh, three guys, the quarterback and the receiver and the running back, all kind of home run hitters. Well, they use that chip on their shoulder like a, like a poker chip. They play it every game. Nobody else wanted you guys. We'll take you. Right. You're Colorado's team. Come play, and now you can exact your revenge on CSU Pueblo because they didn't recruit you. Well, you did. Um, we know Jazz Baines is a great coach. We know Todd Hour is a great coach. Phil V. Hill alluded to both of them, and he's got good relationships with this Western staff. CSU Pueblo just needs to do what they do. He we talked about it at his coaching show. We talked about it earlier. As much as you want to focus on what Western does to you, CSU Pueblo needs to take care of their own house. And if they do that, everything will be fine. Well, that's kind of how I brought up the fact that, uh, you know, last week, the first three series, they just looked kind of abysmal until they got their footing and then they made a couple plays, got things going. But I think it's imperative for them to run the ball better today for the Thunderwolves. I, you know, when we normally do keys to the game, we'll do this one right now because that running game, you know, Keon and Co., is as good as a tailback corp corporation as there is in the Armec, if not the country. And they have not gotten the chance to show what they can do because Chance Fuller, again, playing a different kind of style of quarterback, throwing the dink and dunk passes, then hitting the big hitters. But, boy, you could make this game a, a, a runaway if you keep the ball away from Western and let those tailbacks do what they do. Yes. But a lot of that could be getting that new, young offensive line targeted right yeah plus uh, the score kind of dictated last we dropped 21 to nothing it's hard to run running plays when you're you're down that big in a ball game behind the whole ball game so i think that's imperative that they get out and run it a little bit here today we'll have more of our uh, pregame show joe we'll give you those aforementioned keys to victory that all comes your way next all part of the thunderwolves pregame show on fox sports pueblo you're listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And welcome back to the Thunderwolves. Joe, the keys to victory for today's ball game. First for the Thunderwolves, what do they have to do? A couple of things. We talked about the running game. CSU Pueblo needs to be better on third down. They're only a 30% team in converting third down plays to, to keep the chains moving, and they need to be better on third down just to keep some sustained drives. They also need to uh, get that running game rolling and, and look for the big hitter. You know, we've seen a couple of big plays from Chance Fuller, guys, and I, we know he's a gunslinger, so I think I think big play opportunities are going to be there today for them. For Western Colorado, what do they have to do to run their record to 3-0? and I think they're going to have to get some turnovers, Jim. I think that this is going to be one of those games that is going to – it's going to hinge on whether the ball hits the carpet or goes to the wrong color jersey. And I think if they can make Drew Nash be one-dimensional, run that off Western State offense and shut down the run game and make him throw to beat you, then they got a real good chance. All right, there you have it. We're winding our way toward kickoff. Both teams are starting to uh, mingle around out there, out in the uh, shed where Western Colorado is. Thunderwolves are in the tunnel. We'll welcome them to the field. When we come back after this timeout, we'll have the starting lineups. We'll have uh, the coin toss. We'll have all that coming your way next on Fox Sports Pueblo.
You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And welcome back to the Thunderbolt. Band still out on the field. Team's getting ready to come on out here. What a glorious afternoon here today. It's just nice and it's just nice to be in the 70s, Joe, with the sun out, a little breeze. It just feels perfect out there. I, I heard somebody say, you know, 75 in Pueblo is like 85 anywhere else, though. <laughs> yeah. This is a little warm, but there's a just, it's it's perfect. And it was ugly yesterday. It was. What a rainy, crazy day it was. Western Colorado making their way out of the uh, building across the way, starting to line up. Looks like they're just going to make a nice little casual entrance. No use running out and <laughs> wasting all that energy. It looks like, looks like they're just going to kind of slow walk it out there. Thunderwolves are starting to come out of the building to our right, to get into the tunnel, get ready to come on out here. They're starting to play the hype video here. See, that's what's great about the RMAC is altitude doesn't affect anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone plays at altitude in the RMAC. So Western comes down from Gunnison to play at CSU Pueblo. Now, this originally was supposed to be a home game for Western Colorado, but they had some construction problems at their uh, new facility that they're constructing right on the old facility, as a matter of fact, but a lot of delays. We all know how bad the weather was last spring, and it just put them way behind schedule, so they decided, you know what, we need to move the RMAC games out of there. Well, and I don't know if they're going to move all of them. I know that Two they, I know that yeah. they uh, talking to, to Paul Plinsky and about Chris Graham, is the commissioner of the RMAC, is you start moving that many games, it could get really, uh, really ugly. But this game, uh, key conference game, two top 25 opponents. Uh, you don't want to play it on a soccer field. Right. You just don't. This game's too big for the soccer field in Gunnison. So why not flop them and just come on back? So the next two seasons, the Thunderwolves will make their way to Gunnison. But it should be a much nicer experience. Here comes the pack out of the tunnel, led by Rock. And the old cart with the thunder drum on it. Thunderwolves wearing their uh, home red today with the white pants, white helmet. You know, we found out in the coaches show, the, the way they choose their uniforms, the executive committee or executive council, which I'm, is made up of players, one of the things that they discuss on Sunday night is what they're going to wear for the next home game. And the... White pants, red tops, white helmet was the choice of the executive council today. And we'll go with it. You say, you know what, Western Colorado's red, we're better red. I think that's what the whole idea is here. Band making its way out the field. We'll have Joe keep an eye on the coin toss. They promised the referee, Mike, today, but I got the skinny on the problem there. They've uh, figured out there's a, a lot more to it than just connecting a wire. So maybe next week we'll find out. So Joe will have to keep an eye on the coin toss. I'm going to go ahead and give you the starting lineups for today's ball game. First for the Thunderwolves, we'll introduce their defense today. At cornerback, it'll be Keith McCaney. Keith is a six foot, 181 pound sophomore out of Avondale, Arizona. He'll be joined by Eli Pittman. Eli, a 5'11, 187 pound junior out of Peoria, Arizona. The strong safety is Daniel Bones, six foot, 175 pound junior. He's out of the Springs, went to Pine Creek High School. He'll be joined at free safety by Corey McClellan. Six foot, 292 pound senior out of Monument. He went to Lewis Palmer High School. The linebackers, John Nushi, back to his uh, 11, 5'11", 204 junior. He's out of Lahana, Tiger Pride, as we always say. Darius McMore is the one of the other linebackers. Darius, six foot one, 223 pound junior. He is out of Pago Pago, Samoa. The other linebacker, Isaiah Pittman. Isaiah, 5'10", 180-pound junior out of Peoria, Arizona. The defensive ends, Micaiah Scipio. Scipio is a 6'4", 206-pound junior out of Peyton. He went to Harrison High School. The other defensive end is not Cody Ramming today, so it uh, I didn't see who they're going to start. We assume it's going to be Monty Hamrick, but we were not told who was going to start because Ramming is out of the ballgame. So we'll go ahead and say... Monty, just because we like him. Six foot two, 230 pound sophomore out of Denver. He went to Vista Peak High School. The tackles, Jaden Franklin. Jaden's a six foot three, 310 pound redshirt freshman out of Denver. Went to Regis Jesuit High School. The other tackle, Dominic Finney. He's a six foot one, 271 pound senior out of Mesa Ridge High School. 
in the Springs. Head coach Phil V. Hill in his first year for the Thunderwolves. For Western Colorado, their starting offense will look this way. It'll be Drew Nash. He is a junior college transfer, six foot two, 205 pound sophomore out of Torrance, California. His running back is Devin Butler, 5'10, 170 pound senior out of Fairbanks, Alaska. The receivers, Cole Riders. Cole is a six foot one, 190 pound junior out of Longmont. He went to Silver Creek High School. He'll be joined by Cameron Colangelo. Colangelo, six foot one, 195 pound senior out of Monument. He went to Palmer Ridge High School. Tight end is Daniel Parsick. He's a six foot two, 230 pound sophomore out of Johnstown, Colorado. The Offensive line will be this way. The tackles will be Stevie Byron along with Case and James. The guards, Zach Brumfield and Tanner Tomlinson. The center is Taylor Nichols. Joe, what happened on the coin toss? The Western Colorado, I got to quit calling them Western State. Western Colorado won the toss and deferred to the second half. The coin toss was flipped by Garrett Martin Proctor, a former CSU Pueblo player way back in the day. I think Garrett played in 08 and 09. I think he was an original Thunderwolf, and he's a husband and father in Denver now. Good to see Garrett back with the team. Thunderwolves, uh, ever since John took over the program, reinstated it all, they've, they've done a good job of keeping people involved, and uh, their homecomings are always very well. They have the thing, up Denver, that I played in the uh, golf tournament up there for the Beatty family. That was a Huge success. A lot of former players were at that as well. Well, it's definitely an open door. Phil Veal just continued that. Yeah. He said, you know what? We want former players here. We want them to be part of the program. They're our best ambassadors, especially when you got a Ryan Jensen and Mike Pinnell in the NFL and a Morgan Fox. You realize these guys came from here. You know, more, I still love Morgan Fox from Fountain Fort Carson High School. Skinny little kid now plays in the NFL. Yeah, unfortunately, Ryan Jensen, uh, injury out for the year. But with bad news comes good news. That means he'll be able to be here uh, a little bit for later the, on uh, the year. For the Hall of Fame. Yes. He's getting on October 6th. A little soft spot in my heart for that because my niece, Katie Cunningham, is also getting inducted into the CSU Pueblo Hall of Fame. They're going in as the team. Right. As the women's basketball team. That was a great basketball team. Oh, man, team. it was tremendous. I, I love the fact games. that the women outdrew everybody that year. They, they had 3,000 people for women's basketball at CSU Pueblo. As we mentioned, the Thunderwolves in their home red. Western in their road white, gray pants. Great numerals. Here's the kick. And fair catch signal for, and the Thunderwolves will take it at the four-yard line. So that means they'll come out to the 25-yard line. So the pack content to start from the 25. Joe and I never have a problem with that. Not a bad choice when you get it to the 25 automatically. The... the uh, Kicking coverage and kicking game last week against Grand Valley is another place CSU Pueblo needs to shore up. Well, the new daddy, Jordan Jones, uh, received that fair catch there. You know, we thought Jordan Jones might not be back because he just hey, he had a, he had a baby right before uh, the season started, but here he is. Yeah, he was off the team for a day, I think, and then he decided, you know what, had buyer's remorse, said, you know what, I think I still want to play, and they welcomed him back. That was nice. Here's a handoff up the middle to Martinez, makes a cut. Oh, tried to break one tackle, but couldn't get it done. So he stopped for a yard gain at the 26-yard line. If he breaks that tackle, Joe, he's off to the races. Yeah, again, Western State, good shoestring tackle by the outside linebacker. But again, going to the running game early to try and get Keon involved. He's up the middle this time for three out to the 29-yard line. So it'll be third down and six for the pack on this first possession of the ball game. Jim and Joe with you here today. From the Thunderbolt, the umpire tax moves it back closer to the 28-yard line. That was kind of strange the way they just drug the ball back there, but that's all right. So it's third, and it's closer to seven here. Officially, it'll be six for all you math wizards and like to do football math. Stat geeks. Long count. Snap. Here's the pass over the middle, off the hands of the intended receiver. And that was... That was Cook. cookie, and it and looked like that's usually very sure-handed. It would have been a first down and just glanced right off his shoulder pad. Let it get too tight into his body. Well, and I think Chance kind of wound up on that one, and he might have thrown it just a hair early. I don't think there was any pressure there, but that was a quick three and out for Western State's defense, and they'll take that all day long. Well, that's the fourth straight three and out for the Thunderwolves in the first quarter of a game. Remember the first three possessions last week against Grand Valley State were three and outs. Here's punt formation. They blocked the punt. It's on the deck. It's loose, and Western Colorado picks it up. They've got it down to the four-yard line. They got it in there clean, blocked the punt. 
and able to cover it up. They're going to mark it at the five-yard line. So the first big break of the game belongs to the Mountaineers. They'll take it over first and goal from the five-yard line. He got in untouched, took it right off Haddad's foot. So an inauspicious start for the pack. Three and out on offense and then get the punt blocked. And now Western Colorado a chance to jump up early in this ball game. Not sure that that uh, snap had some smoke to it. It almost looked like it floated back there just a little bit. But he took it right off the foot. So that tells you he got in quick. So Nash, the quarterback, they operate from the pistol. Butler lines up right behind Nash. Takes the snap. They give it to Butler up the middle. Breaks through for about a yard is all. He's hit hard at the four-yard line. Might give him the three. It'll be second down and goal. They're going to mark it at the four. So second and goal. Ball in the right hash mark for the Mountaineers. Jazz Baines, the head coach for Western Colorado in his 13th season. He was one of the three finalists for this Thunderwolf job. That was uh, given to Philip V. Hill. Gary Seidenberger on the stop there. He had a pick six last week as a true freshman out of Texas. This time they go to the regular shotgun with the Butler on the left hip this time of Nash. And they're going to give it to him around the right side. Thunderbolts have it strung out, but he dives to the pylon. He might be in. Are they going to say he's out of bounds on the one, perhaps? He, dove, he is out he of bounds. He dove, but he, he missed the pylon. They are going to mark it back closer to the two-yard line. Well, I thought he was going to get in there, but it's just his angle of the dive. It's closer to the one, so third. So second and five for the Mountaineers. Again, they give it up the middle. And just a big mash of bodies in the middle of the field. They call it a gain of two. It'll be third down and three. So almost like Western Colorado says, you know what? We're just going to out physically for a while. They are big and strong. You can tell that's one of the point of emphasis is on their recruiting. They are huge across that offensive front. Yeah, they go get big ones because they, they go into hibernation in Gunnison in the winter. Third down and three. Two backs in the backfield. Tied in into the set in the slot, actually, to the right side. So they're unbalanced that side. And they give it up the middle, and the Thunderwolves have this all jammed up. Going to be a loss on the play. And that's yeah. some pushing and shoving after the play is over. Drew Nash did not like that call that came in from the coaching staff, or he gave it to the wrong person. There was a bad read. He was kind of put his hands up in disbelief that he called that play, and, and it was I think it was just a poor read. Yeah, it was almost like a counterplay to Colangelo. He's kind of lines up in the slot most of the time. There are two backs. Neither one of them touched it. They end up in Colangelo's hands, and it just looked screwy from the whole start. So now Cook again stands back at his own 22-yard line. The punter is Zach Graby. Takes the snap. He angles it toward Ooh. the right sideline. Booms this one. Sends Cook all the way back inside the 10. He takes it at the 5. Comes up the field across the 10 and run out of bounds. So good directional kick plus good effort there by Western Colorado's punter. That's a big kick. Very little wind today. Not even a hint of a breeze down there. So now the Thunderwolves will start this drive from their own 10-yard line. So field position has definitely been big advantage Western Colorado in this game. See what Braley Brown and Garrett Graff and the offense can dial up. You see Fuller coming out there. He's doing all kinds of calisthenics with his arm, almost like he's trying to get it loose. Straight drop back. He looks left. Pumps, pumps, pumps again. Goes up the sideline looking for Paulus. Incomplete. It hit him in the hands, but it was in the fingertips. I shouldn't say the hands. As he just got it over the top of the cornerback there. Would have taken a circus catch there. Paulus just couldn't quite catch the back end of the ball. Chance Fuller did not survey the field. C.K. Paulus was the only receiver he looked at the entire time and waited to try to throw him open, but into double coverage. Second down and 10 now for the pack. And they're going to run the ball around the right side. Martinez puts his head down. He breaks one tackle, pushing the pile out across the 15 to about the 16-yard line. Decent run on the play. They gained four. Lucky dude was in there to run lead from his tight end position. And it's going to be third down and four now for the Thunderwolves from the 16-yard line. I think Chance Fuller is going to have to start looking at the middle of the field for these receivers and a back slip in because there's nothing open wide or deep. Two wideouts left. It's a double tight end set here. 
And they give it to Martin. He's hitting the backfield. He's going to be thrown for a yard loss. Not another good, another poor series offensively for CSU Pueblo. Lost a two on that play. All the way back to the 14-yard line, so it's fourth down and six. Well, the Thunderwolves have had one punt cleanly blocked today, which set up a five-yard drive for the first touchdown of the day. The last punt was deflected, but managed to get up the field about 30 yards. See what happens this time. And now we've got a timeout taken by Western Colorado. They didn't have enough personnel out there. They only have 10 guys on the field. So that's their second time out already here of the first half. A little uneasy feeling with special teams right now if you're CSU Pueblo. On one hand, you're great if Andrew Cook's returning punts, but on the other, you're nervous as a feral cat yes, on, exactly. as you punt. Well, I'll tell you what, the score 10 to 7 in this game. Packer down only by three, and I say only by three. This feels like a Western Colorado blowout. They've dominated this game so far. And With all, the exception of the punt return. And it's all been field position. And CSU Pueblo's offense, again, last week against Grand Valley State, they had seven yards of total offense in the first quarter. I don't think they have that in this quarter. Maybe dominate too strong a work because the Thunderbolt's defense has played pretty well. It, you know, the ten points aren't on them. You know, a five-yard drive, and then they uh, gave up one first down from the 25 before forcing a field goal, so... In many respects, they've kind of done their job. So I guess domination isn't the right word for it. And there's a man offside, and he was in the neutral zone. This is going to make it fourth down in a yard. Still got to kick it. <laughs> now, was he all the way into the neutral zone to cause a neutral zone violation? It definitely made the Thunderwolves move. The way the referees are talking this over, this might be five on the Thunderwolves. Well, the umpire called it, so maybe it was a snap infraction. He's the one looking at the center. And it is offside on Western Colorado, but it's not enough to get the first down. So it's going to be fourth down now and about a foot. So that doesn't change the Thunderwolves thinking at all here. Now it gives Andre Haddad a little bit of breathing room, though. Just a little bit. Better to snap. snap. Kick is on the way. High spiraling kick. Chance of return taken at the 41. Nice cut across the 45. Spinning out of a tackle. Spins to the sideline, midfield, down the sideline to about the 45-yard line. And a flag. flag is down. Yeah. So we're going to get an illegal block here on Western Colorado or a hold. Boy, it looked like a pretty big, good scrum right there when he tried to turn the corner. And that's where the flag is at, right at the 49. So will be 10 yards from that spot. Still good field position for the Mountaineers. Wow. Oh, that's even a bigger foul. The old blindside block when you decleat somebody. Well, and Andre Arba, he's had a, an eventful first quarter in uh, special teams. He's got a blocked punt and now a blindside block. But it was a blindside block. They just showed it on replay. He did get a guy coming around the corner and decleated him. So it's back to the 34-yard line. So Western Colorado will start this drive there. Still good field position. They have overwhelmingly won the field position battle here in the first quarter. It's 10 to 7. Western Colorado with the lead. They scored 10 points in the first five minutes of the game. Two backs in the backfield. Now they send a man in motion. They go play action. They look right, fire it right. Try to make a man miss. Getting up the field to about the 41-yard line. A gain of 7. Pass caught here to Victory David. Gains seven. It'll be second down and three. It was a nice little play by Western State. They let everybody clear out, and David was the probably the last read on that play, but he was the most open, that's for sure. Thunderwolves making a lot of substitutions here. Trying to stay fresh. Monty Hammer runs out, but then they said, no, we need you in there, son, for second and four. Now we're all set to go from the pistol this time. And they fake it. Going to roll the pocket left. Nash dumps it. Ball's deflected. Oh. Incomplete. Boy, if it had, had a little bit more air there, we might have had a big number 97 lumbering up the field for the Thunderbolts. Turrentine 
if that ball had a little bit more air on it, that would have been fun watching him lumber up the sideline. And I think he was there. I think he just didn't see it. So third down and three now for the Mountaineers. Thunderbolts again going to their nickel package. They're taking some big bodies off the field and getting some faster safety types out there. This might even be their dime package. Looks like six defensive backs here on this play. On third and three. Going to roll the pocket right. It's going to be a straight run by Nash. Puts his head down, doesn't get there. That was a straight run all the way. He gains a yard to the 42, but he'll be two yards short. It'll be fourth down. The Mountaineers have to punt the ball away. Tiger Pride, John Nushi does a great job of just stringing it out and getting the tackle by the ankles of the quarterback. Fourth and two. And time is going to run out here on the quarter. We're down to 15. I guess they could hustle out here and punt it away, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, no sense of urgency here. Clock winding down, and that will do it for the first quarter. Western Colorado had the great start. They got 10 early points. Cook with the punt return for the Thunderwolves. It's 10 to 7. Mountaineers on top. Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And welcome back to the Thunderbolt. Take a tour around the Armac right now. Mine shellacking Adams State. They moved to the fourth quarter, 63 to seven. Ouch. Mesa leads Mines, South Dakota Mines at halftime, 31 to 14. The other two games tonight, Highlands is at Fort Lewis. That actually has started the same time as ours. No score in on that one yet. And night game tonight, Shadron State is in Spearfish to take on Black Hill State. Air Force a winner last night, impressive. Of course, big game tonight, the Rams and the Buffs, 8 o'clock. Northern Colorado in action right now against Washington State. I don't have a score on that one yet. So that's your tour around the state of Colorado. We're set to go here. Punt formation for Western Colorado. Cook will stand back at his own 10 to receive this punt. High Cook. sky too now, Jim. He could be staring into that sun. Well, the last punt was a boomer. Does Jazz Baines have a fake? Low snap, but it's handled. Kick is angled toward the right sideline. And goes out of bounds. That was a good directional kick that time. Going to be inside the 20, probably closer to the 15, I would think. They're going to mark it at the 13-yard line. That's a good spot. That's right where it went out. Unlike. Yeah, last week they'd have marked it. <laughs> they'd have marked it down there at about the five-yard line. Yeah, we saw some interesting marks last week. Using GLIAC officials for a GLIAC team and GLIAC home opener. His brother-in-law is the head coach. No. <laughs> Well, Thunderbolts, again, poor field position. Their offense just has not had any breathing room in this game so far. They start from their own 13 this time. Martinez in motion left, so empty backfield. Fuller fires it left. Caught in stride. Paulus crossed the 25 out to about the 29-yard line. There was a strike. And he almost dropped it. Bounced off his hands, and he was able to call it in. But that was a nice little play. Got Keon in motion. Picks up a first down. Gain of 16 out to the 29-yard line. Trips to the right this time. Single wide out left. Martinez again in motion to the left side. Straight drop back. They look right. Fire right. Caught. This is Rakowski. He's up to about the 35-yard line, so he'll pick up six. Second down and four. Then the man is decked behind the play, and the uh, umpire says, don't act like that. He acted like it was his fault that he fell down. It was the center for the Thunderwolves. Uh, Chapel, the uh, true freshman. He is impressive, man. Whole chapel. Second and four for the Thunderwolves. Straight drop back. Fuller looks right. Fire. Oh, almost intercepted. Again, he's got a backup wide receiver there, Gravano. And it looked like he thought Gravano was going to do an in. Gravano kind of went out, and it almost ended up right in the safety's hands. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's seeing because he's, he's not thrown to the right spot yet, except for those two early completions on this drive. So third down now and four for the Thunderwolves at the 35-yard line. Double wide out left, single wide out right. Lucky doing motion to the right. They throw a wide receiver screen, and the uh, Mountaineers have it sniffed out. But reaching forward, great play for the first down there. Reggie, what a play by Retzlaff. Reggie Retzlaff, who caught the game-tying touchdown on the last play of the game last week, got dinged up in that game able to answer the bell today 
Well, they had that sniffed out, but he reached forward and got the ball to the first down line. First and 10 for the pack. They go up the middle with it to Martinez, and he bangs his way out across the 40 to the 41. It'll be a gain of two, second down and eight. 10 to 7, our score. Western Colorado on top here as we're early on in the second quarter. 13.25 to be exact to go here in the second quarter. One thing you'll know about Western State is they do not miss a lot of tackles. They wrap up. They're taught. They're schooled well. Lucky do in motion to the right side. Straight drop back. Fuller steps up in the pocket. Looks left. Fires it out of bounds. This thing started to get away from him there, and he said, you know what, I'm going to live to fight another down here. It's good coverage down the field by Western Colorado. There's all this talk about the Thunderbolts great secondary, but this secondary for Western Colorado played pretty well so far. So third and eight. Sooner or later, Fuller's going to have to decide to run one, I think, Joe, because he, he, and there's the man offside. Flag comes down. Free play here for the pack. They go up the right sideline. Rhett's left. Tried to make the circus catch, but it goes incomplete. He tried to bend it like Beckham, but Chance Fuller knew that he had a free play, took the shot. But again, even that pass, the ball was not in play. Well, third and manageable now, third and four. Yeah, maybe third and three even. They're marking it at the 46. They need the 49. It's one of those. Could run it here. Yeah. Unbalanced to the right for the pack. They are going to run it. And oh, boy, what a collision there. And smack down. What a play by Western Colorado. Coming in on the stop. That was Le Kendall Zier. Lightfoot. Was it him or Moore? I think it was Kendall Lightfoot who just de Keon Martinez. Well, there was two of them, so I think you're right. Yeah. Yep. So fourth down and two. Fourth and three, rather. Excuse me. Punt formation for the pack. Mountaineers shifting along the line here. Here's the snap. Punt is away. High spiraling kick. Good punt. Taken at the eight-yard line. Going to try to return it here. Getting up the field right up the middle across the 15, across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. Good return there for the Mountaineers. Haddad almost kick, outkicked his coverage that time, which is what you want. Good high spiral turned over. So Western finally will be starting a drive. Fairly deep in their own territory from their own 21-yard line. That feels like a big win for the Thunderwolves right here. So now the Western's offense really hasn't done much in this game. They do have 10 points on the board. Remember, the first drive was five yards. It took them three plays to go five. Then they got a first down on their second drive, which started at the Thunderwolves 25 after a fumbled kickoff return. And they only had, what, 12 yards on that drive before settling for the 39-yard field goal. So they really haven't done anything since. One other first down that I remember. They start from their own 21, ball on the right hash mark. Thunder was with only two down linemen here. Jump pass over the middle, caught first down and more. The and ball comes out. out. And I think that's the ground causing the fumble. Yeah, here comes the head linesman saying, yep, two linesmen coming in saying the ball came out when he hit the ground. I think that's a good call. So this is a little pop pass over the middle there. Third to tight end, Daniel Parsick. Yep. I'm surprised we haven't seen that from CSU Pueblo. And now we've got a cramping situation injury here. Corey McClellan, hopefully it's just a cramp. He is down, holding his right leg. That is not a good sign for the pack here. As Corey is down on the turf here with 11.43 to go in the second quarter. 10 to 7, our score. Western Colorado with the lead. McClellan, the senior out of Palmer Ridge High School. Emotional leader of this defense. He and Daniel Bone. That's a long way away from where the play was. I wonder if he was just trying to get off the field and maybe now he's up. He just yeah, seems all right. He's waved everybody off, says, I'm okay. We'll see. You know, I. I just wonder if he was woozy on the play. So now they'll have to check him out. I'm sure he'll probably have to go into the protocol here to make sure he's okay. He may have been just trying to get off the field and then went down to the turf. So that's kind of scary. We'll keep an eye on that when he goes into the uh, medical. Well, now they're, he's kind of flexing his right shoulder. First and 10 from the 35 for the Mountaineers. 
Straight drop back now. Nash rolls the pocket right, sets. He looks back left. Here comes pressure, gets the pass away. Hamrick smashes him. Pass down to field. What a catch by Western Colorado at the 31-yard line. Colangelo somehow came down with that. Triple coverage, but he's the one that comes down with it. That was crazy. Just threw it up for grabs. One guy in between three, and he gets the catch. So first and ten Mountaineers at the 31-yard line of the pack. They flip the field in a hurry. Play action. Nash rolls right. Again, over the middle in the air. Incomplete. Boy, there's a chance for an interception there. Parsik just let that one slip right through his mitts, but nobody there for the Thunderwolves. Daniel Bone was about a half a step in the trailer on that. He makes that kick. pick. He goes to the house. So second and 10 now for the Mountaineers, 31-yard line of the pack. 10-7, to 7, they lead it. 10-58 to go here in the first half. Nash looks over the formation. He's got two wide outs to the right. He's going to hand. Oh, he's going to keep it this time. Goes up the middle. He's hit hard at the 29-yard line. Well, another body just flipped to the deck. And some of the defensive players of the Thunder will send, what was that, Mr. Referee? As uh, Eli Pittman looks back and says, you know, can he just throw me to the ground like that after the play's over? Third down and eight now for the Mountaineers from the 29-yard line. Like to get, see a decent pass rush here with fresh legs from that defensive front. Monty Hamrick on one edge. Nash frustrated with the bench there on getting the play call in, but now he has it. Play clock's down to eight. Mountaineers have already used two timeouts here in this half. Takes the snap, straight drop back here. Goes over the middle, and it is incomplete. There was a lot of contact there, but they're saying no penalty. I thought there might have been a hold, a little tug there by the Thunderwolves as Isaiah Pittman had his hand around the waist, it looked like, of the Western receiver. Good no call there by the officials. This will be a long field goal. This will be in the 47-yard range. Yeah, line of scrimmage is the 29. 46 yards. Yep, they're going to mark it at the 36, so add the 10 of the end zone. 46-yard try from the left hash mark. This uh, kicker to say he has a tendency to hook it. See if he can hook one in there. Ball's down. Kick is up, and it's on its way, and he hooked it wide to the left. So the Thunderwolves defense stiffens after giving up the big play, and just as we surmise there, to say he never kicks one straight. He kind of kicks it. looks like a helicopter coming out of there and just hooked dead left on him. He plays that draw, Jim. Plays right to left. You got to play that draw, though. Those draws sometimes turn into a quick hook into the woods, right? Yeah, trust me. <laughs> Snappy. I'm never comfortable hitting a hook. That's my favorite. I like to turn it over. What's that Ken Lewis Central Special? Of course. A high draw. See, I was Rich Reasoner, the high fade, fade, soft fade. Yeah. The buttercup Jack Nichols. versus the high draw. Yeah. Straight drop back. Here comes pressure. He steps up and avoids it somehow for the moment, then is sacked at the 23-yard line. Great disguise blitz by Western. Came delayed just a hair. That was Drew Montez. No, I'm sorry. Well, Thunderwolves only had two players deep in the pattern, Cook and Paulus, but they were way down the field, so Fuller had nowhere to go with it. Second down and 16. Well, this is strength of this Western club. They play great defense year after year. Straight drop back. Fuller fires left. Cotton, that's going to go nowhere. Gain of about three out to the 26-yard line. Gravano on the catch there. Think of, think of Western State's coverage as like an umbrella. They'll keep everything underneath it, and they just umbrella the deep third of the field. So you can't get anything past 15 yards. Third and 13 for the Thunderwolves. Fuller, long count. Now he changes the play calls. He looks over to the sideline, getting the change. He's got trips to the right this time. That's the wide side of the field. Rhett's left's wide to the left. Straight drop back. Here comes pressure off the edge. Passes away. It's incomplete. Well, Fuller was, was being taken down by his ankles. Yeah, uncomfortable there is coming in on the blitz. Uh, on the Actually, just the defensive end, Jaden Armbrust. He got down around the feet that time of Fuller and made it uncomfortable for him. The offense is still in neutral, Jim. 
I don't even know if it's in neutral. It still might be in park. <laughs> exactly. Let's hope the brake holds. 8.43 to go here in the first half. Here's the snap. Kick is away. Man, they get pressure every time. Chancellor return, taking it to 35. Nice move up the field, 40, 45, out to around the 49-yard line. Good return. As I tell you what, they're making the punter, Haydad, or Haydad, uncomfortable, and he's not getting the full treatment on the punts right now. No, it's quick. It's it's just, well, when you have one taken off your foot, you, you tend to get a little gun shy and try and get rid of it. Timeout on the field. 8.31 to go here in the first half. It's 10 to 7 Mountaineers. Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Serby. 10 to 7 our score. Western Colorado on top. They'll have excellent field position again. To me, that is the big story of the game besides the uh, block punt and the you know, the turnover on the kickoff return has been field position. Western Colorado has had way better field position. I almost feel like it's a Dan Reeves movie. Remember, that was always his thing. Get some field position, boys. Yeah, you just want to – you, and it's slow playing it. And that's yeah. what Western State does to you. They slow play it. They make you look ugly. But Chance Fuller, who has played at a high level for the first two weeks of the season, is not playing at a high level today. And if he doesn't go, the offense doesn't go. Yeah, he's, he's struggling to say the least here so far. Speaking of struggling, Alabama is behind South Florida three to nothing. They're in the second quarter. Georgia's losing too. What kind of day is this? Still no Corey McClellan back out on the field yet. So first and ten for the Mountaineers from their own 49-yard line. Butler is the back. Double wide out right there in a stack to the right. That's the big tight end. Parsec in motion. Resets on the right side. They sprint the pocket right. Fire it right. Caught wide open. Up the field. First down and more inside the 40. Down to about the 38-yard line. Boy, nobody there for the Thunderwolves. This took what they gave them. Well, that was a safety blitz from the blind side of Nash, and they rolled the pocket the other way. So another great call, Western State versus CSU Pueblo's defense. They're winning the chess match on calls right now. That was Yazzie on the catch. He's not even on the depth chart. So they brought him off the bench. Special play, and he picks up 11. And off up the middle, and not much for Butler. It's jammed up in the middle. Gains, uh, man, maybe three on the play. Those big bodies up front, they're still able to push you around a little bit. I don't see a flag anywhere, but they they were got caught in a substitution, but they must have got everybody out. I'm counting bodies. There sure looks like a lot more red out there than it should be. Uh, no, nope, yeah, Phil called Beal it. is upset. Well, they just here. called an illegal substitution on the on the Thunderwolves. He's saying you you got to if they sub we get to yeah, sub. Yeah, exactly. So that's what Phil Vigil's whole argument is here. How can you you've got to allow us time to sub? And he wants an explanation over here on the sideline and the referee and the center judge kind of having their own little conversation here. So it's first and 5 now for the Mountaineers from the 33-yard line. Straight drop back. They look left. They're going for it all up the left side. Some pushing and some shoving. Some tugging incomplete. Boy, you could have called a push on the Western receiver. You could have called a hold on the Thunderbolts receiver. They just decided to let him play there. That's Rubbins racing right there, Jim. It's a good no call. Two guys going up for the ball. Sometimes you worry about the last guy involved on the tug, and the last guy was the Thunderwolf uh, defensive back McCaney with a handful of jersey there. So second and five for the Mountaineers from the 33-yard line. Play action. Look over the middle. Fired incomplete. Flag down. Going to be interference on the Thunderwolves. Well, that was an easy one. And that one's going to be on Danielle Dixon. He had the intended receiver turned around. So that marks it down to the 30-yard line. First down and 10 for the Mountaineers. Now, in Dixon's defense, it was a quick hitter, and he was more or less trying to bump the receiver. 
But the ball came out so quick he was engaged, and hence the flag came down. So first and 10 for the Mountaineers from the 30-yard line of the Thunderwolves. Already leading the game 10-7, to trying to get some more here. Straight drop back. Looks right. Fires oh right. My. Man wide open down at the 10-yard line. That was a great job that time by Nash. Joe, you can see him. He was looking left. He just looked the whole defense off, then fired it up the right sideline. Easy pitch and catch. Blown coverage there. But he's got a flag. Might be roughing. So Thunderwolves guilty party, James Turrenton. So it's first and goal at the five for the Mountaineers. 7.37 to go here in the first half. Mountaineers lead it 10 to seven, trying to get that 10 point lead back here. Double wide out left. From the pistol, Butler is the lone back and now they're gonna shift him to the right side. So they're out of the pistol and out of the gun. Long count by Nash, takes the snap, looks right now, he's going to roll the pocket right, flips it in the back of the end zone incomplete. Well-designed play there, that was a run pass option. Nash probably could have taken that in on his own, decided to throw back across his body incomplete. Trying to get it to Elias Zarate, a sophomore out of Denver's North High School. Right there off of Spear Boulevard there in Denver. Kind of like that campus up there at Denver North. Kind of cool. Second down and five for the Mountaineers. They're going to run it left. Thunderbolts had it initially, but trying to string it out. Turning the corner to the pylon. Loses the ball. It comes out. Was he in? Touchdown. He was able to stretch it out and stick it across the goal line, actually making contact with the pylon, so a touchdown for the Mountaineers. Give the left side of Western State's offensive line credit for that. They set up that wall just a little bit, and great blocking by the tight end and the receiver just so the butler can get over the pylon. Boy, it looked like initially the Thunderbolts had it diagnosed, but they just couldn't get anybody to the ball carrier, and he was able to turn the corner. Phil Veal now throwing the challenge Now we may have flag. a review here. So indeed it is. Phil Veal throwing out the challenge flag. So we're going to go to the video review here. He might think it's a fumble. We'll see. Did he lose control of the ball before he, he made contact with the ground? Yep, so that's the question, whether he had control of the ball when he stuck it out over the goal line. Maybe the ball was coming loose. Maybe they have uh, a different look at it there. So we'll see if they, last week they didn't put, they, but that review we had last week, it was up on the board quickly. It showed the guy's knee was down, and they decided not to show it anymore. And they're definitely not going to put it on the Thunderbook-tron. But again, the play there, Joe, it looked like the Thunderwolves had it diagnosed. There was just, just a race to the corner, or a race to the sideline, actually, and finally all the bodies kind of fell down. He turned the corner and just stuck it across and made contact with the pylon. I guess the question is, did he have complete control of the ball when it hit the pylon? This Maybe is it I was coming we, out. I wish we had a monitor to look at it about three or four different angles and times. Yep. Yeah, Joe, it's quickly becoming apparent. We're just the radio guys now. Well, it, it, what's <laughs> we don't get anything anymore. <laughs> we want, I, we I want just, a monitor. It's not that hard. To, you know, Scott Richards always got us a monitor in here. It sure seemed like that ball was on the ground in play. Now, was it after he crossed the plane? You couldn't really tell with the sea of red trying to string it out, but it sure looked like the ball was on the ground. Good news for CSU Pueblo fans, though. Corey McClellan is out there now with his helmet on in the on the defense. You do not want to lose Corey McClellan. So, again, we're in a video review here. Calling the field was touchdown Mountaineers. Thunderwolves' argument is the ball was coming out before he made contact with the pylon. To my eye, it looked like the ground caused the ball to pop out after he hit the pylon. That's the way I saw it. But 
it was over in his corner. So looks like the decision has been made. The officials are trotting out on the field. Looks like everybody's going to stay put and you're going to kick an extra point here. Here's the call. So it is a touchdown for the Mountaineers. So extra point try upcoming here with 7.07 to go in the first half. It's now 16 to 7 Mountaineers with the extra point upcoming here. So no more challenges for the day for the Thunderbolts. You get one a game. If you get the first one right, I think you get a bonus one. You get another one. Good snap. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. 7.07 to go here in the first half. We're not going to get the media time out here, it looks like. They're going to make a quick change, so we'll keep it right here. But Thunderbolts, after they seem to get the game back to normal with that punt return, defense made a couple of stops. The offense has just not been able to do anything in this game. And Western finally hits a couple big plays, and they get it on into the end zone. It just... I don't want to say they're listless, and I, I, I will give credit to Todd Auer and the, and the Mountaineers. They are playing hard defensively up front. They're making Chance Fuller uncomfortable. The receivers are not getting open. The running game has been shut down. So all those things you need to happen on offense are not happening. Phil Veal now is down arguing with the rep. Remember when they had that uh, illegal substitution call? He was saying the refs should have stepped in. He keeps pointing his arms out to the side. What that means is you have to, when your arms are outstretched like that, it means play has to be held up until the defense gets the substitutes. You're allowed to match the offensive substitution. He's saying they weren't allowed to match on the play. Well, and the other thing is, is to be fair, I did not see the offense sub, but I right. wasn't looking for it. And maybe that's what the White Hat is saying is like they didn't sub. Yeah, so if they don't sub, you have to be ready to go. Now the ball will be kicked off here momentarily. Still 7.07 to go here in the first half. Here's the kick. Low kick. Chance for the return here. The up man takes it for the Thunderwolves. Across the 20. 25. Spin. Boy, you're always worried about a fumble when a big tight end type gets it on the return because they're just not used to taking contact like that. You also want him to not spin. Yeah, you don't want to spin a Rama from a lineman no. or a tight end. And finally got an ID that the uniform got kind of scrunched up. It was Colton Rose, uh, backup tight end, redshirt freshman out of Valor Christian in Highlands Ranch. We got an injured Thunderwolf down on the field, face down, right at the 25, and can't pick out that number yet. So another delay here. In the game, training trainer is out there. Also, Phil Vigil out there trying to assess the situation. Cannot identify who the player is yet for the Thunderwolves. So, with a little delay here, we'll get you updated on what else is going on here. Let's go ahead and refresh the screen here. Uh, mines all over Adam State. They've got a 70 burger up, and the game's gone final, 70 to seven. Over at Adams State, Mines will be in here next week. Mesa leading South Dakota Mines 31-21 in the third quarter. Jim, that's Noah Purcell who's coming off the field, and we've seen Noah Purcell play well the last two weeks. One other game in action right now at halftime. Highlands leads Fort Lewis 17-3. To get you how much this game is dragging along right now, that game started at the same time as ours. They're already at halftime. We still have seven minutes to go here in the first half. Well, it's time for Fuller to get things going here. He has had an abysmal day so far for the Thunderwolves. Keeps flexing that right arm. I wonder if he's got a little shoulder issue or something going into the day. Takes the snap. They're going to run the ball in Western Colorado having none of that. No gain on the play. Well, the battle in the trenches today when the Thunderwolves have the ball, been won by Western Colorado. 
Not even close. They are big and strong, and they're establishing. They play a three-man yeah. front, a two-man front, a four-man front. Now we got a false start on the Thunderwolves or a snap infraction. This isn't going to make it any easier, so it's going to be second down and 15 now coming for the Thunderwolves. I had, I had a feeling about today's game, Jim, but this was not the feeling I had. So second and 15 for the pack from their own 20-yard line. Fuller takes the snap, play action, steps up, fires it left, caught by Cook, but he runs out of real estate, gets only maybe three on the play. Four. They're going to give him the 24-yard line. So he's going to have third down and 11. So sooner or later, the Thunderbolt's going to have to stand in the pocket there and try to get one up the field here. But that's easier said than done against this pressure that Western Colorado, they come from a number of different angles. That's the problem is getting them targeted on these pass rushes. They're very elaborate. Here they send six. Look out. They run the middle screen. Caught. Martinez breaks a tackle. He's got the first down. Well, that's how you break a six-man rush, Joe. You just throw it right over the top of him. And Martinez gets the first down out to the 40-yard line. Great use of a screen call and badly needed first down for Sissue Pueblo's offense. So first and 10 out to the 40-yard line. Fake. Go over the middle and incomplete. Trying to get it to uh, Rett's left flag is down. That's going to be hit him too soon. Retzliff chalks it over with the safety. Said, yeah, he hit me before the ball got there. Might have been. A, there was a lineman way down there too, though, Jim. Let's see what they call here. They may wave it off. Yeah. So second down and 10. It was thrown by the umpire, which is they usually don't do pass interference calls. So second and ten. They rush three this time. Fuller stepping up. Here comes pressure, though. Gets the pass away. Had a man open, but he overshot him. Got another flag. It's going to be holding on CSU Pueblo. So it's going to be second and 20. Domingo Prince, the second out of Cherry Creek High School, ticketed with the hold. So second and 20, now back at the 30-yard line. It's just been an uphill slog this entire day for the Thunderwolves offense. Listless. They back out of the blitz situation. They just rush three, and they try to set up the screen, but the receiver was decked. They were trying to get it to Martinez, but the man that was knocked down by the defensive lineman alertly kind of got his hand around Martinez, took him down, and the pass just sailed into a vacant spot. Now you're facing third and 20. And Western, they've been able to get pressure just rushing three or four guys. They have set the house a couple of times. The last time they did, they got burned on the middle screen. They're all up along the line of scrimmage. Nobody down in a set stance. Here they rush five. Here comes pressure. Get the pass away and complete. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. Even if it was caught by Martinez, the middle linebacker was right there to deck him. That was Kendall Lightfoot. So fourth down, Thunderbolts had to punt the ball away. Boy, as excited as we were about the offense after game one and then even stretches of the game last week, no signs of that here as Western Colorado's defense is just stifled the Thunderbolts offense. Punt formation. They got a chance again. They almost get home, and they do get home and take him down back at the 16-yard line. If he'd have punted it, it would have been blocked. Instead, he just held on to it and is tackled back at the 16-yard line. Thunderbolts special teams, other than the punt return today, are killing them. That rugby punt, they try and run away from coverage, and he actually ran into the coverage. So Western now a chance to really put a 
big foot in the back of the Thunderbolts here on this drive they can put a touchdown up. They already lead the game 17 to 7. 531 to go here in the first half. Bring a man in motion toward the formation. Resetting. Going to roll the pocket right. Fire it right. Man is open. He's down on a knee. No, his knee wasn't touching the ground, evidently. And it's going to be a gain of about seven down to the 12-yard line. Good job of keeping his knee above the ground that time. Just Wide pushing, receiver Drew Montez. Yeah, just pushing the defensive backs seven yards deep and throwing it into empty space. Second down and... We'll call it four from the 11-yard line. Man in motion left. Quarterback draw. Hit at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Boy, Nash is tough, Joe. He's not afraid of contact, is he? He's big and strong, and he takes on the tacklers. Close to the first down. He's going to be about a yard short at the nine, maybe two yards short. We'll call it third down and two. Third and two from the nine. Hogan is the running back. They're in the pistol this time. Two wideouts left, single wideout right. That's Montez. Montez has caught a touchdown pass this year. He's wide to the right. They're going to run it up the middle. Thunderbolts are there, but good second effort. Looks like he's got the first down to me. As Hogan able to get that little extra effort and dive over the top and get the first down. If you're 16, or enough, they've, they've put the fist up saying yeah. it's fourth down, so I think, maybe he didn't get there. I think where his knee went down, he was just going to be short. Jazz Bain's opting for the points here rather than the kill shot. I'm not sure I would have done this. I probably would have gone for this one, Jim. I think so. My, I think I would have, too. I, I'm astonished that they didn't get the spot for the first down. looked like the second effort he died for, but like you said, maybe his knee was down. So field goal attempt here. All right to say, ball's down, kick is up. Boy, Thunderbolt's got through there, but just didn't get home. Kick is good. 3.42 to go here in the first half. Western now leads it 20 to 7 on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Welcome back to the Thunderbolt. 20 to 7, Mountaineers on top. So they've been more or less given 13 points today. They had the block punt early in the game. Five-yard field scored. Fumbled kickoff return. Took over to 25. Got a first down. Ended up kicking a 39-yard field goal. And here, after a uh, punt that didn't take place, the punter was tackled. They got a first down but unable to get any closer. Actually, they didn't get the first down. They went three and out and then had to kick a field goal. But that's 13 points just been handed to him. Licking your chops if you're Jazz Baines and the Mountaineers, saying thank you for all this hospitality. If I'm CSU Pueblo, I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned right now offensively. My offensive line, we know they're young. They have not held up today, which is kind of ironic since they played All-Americans last week in at Grand Valley. You're at home, and you're not getting it done. Your quarterback has been completely off the mark. Yeah, maybe it's the old Grand Valley hangover. Here's the kick. And it's going to sail into the end zone. Over the head of McGarrity. He just picks it up after it bounced into the end zone. So the Thunder will take over at their own 25-yard line. Thunderbolts have had zero field position in this game. First down. This might be their best field position of the day, actually, starting from the 25. They've done that a couple of times after kickoffs. And, of course, the punt return, that would have been great field position, but ended up taking it to the house. We'll see if Fuller can get some time here and get something happening. Straight drop back, looks left, fires left, and the pass is caught by the short gain. Rakowski, or no, it's Cook, rather, right at the 29. And he is hit immediately. Good closing speed by the Mountaineers' defensive backs. 
Yeah, they're they're playing off, but they they read and write read and react as good as any we've seen this year. Runwolves run it to Martinez, cuts inside and right into the uh, wave of defenders. It looks like he's got a moment where he's going to get something going, but Western State doing a great job of just fouling things up later in the play. They don't miss tackles, Jim. They haven't missed a tackle today. So at least, at least the the linebackers and the interior defensive linemen. So it's third down now and two for the Thunderwolves. Stevie Kroll in now at quarterback. So we'll see what Lefty can do here. Takes a snap. He's going to run it. Quarterback draw. He's got the first down as he gets out to the 36-yard line. Now the pile pushes forward. Fans like it. Rugby scrum pushes it all the way out to the 40-yard line. It's like we don't want our starter to run. We want our backup to run. Well, I kind of mentioned that earlier. There's been a couple times in this game where Fuller, it looked like he had a chance to run, Joe, and he decided not to. I remember that one you talked about when he had the first down yeah, toss. Just, he just go. He, if he just goes, he gets it easily. Instead, he tried to pass it and threw it away. That's just not part of his arsenal. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. They show blitz off the edge. They send five. Steps up, fires down him, intercepted. Intercepted at the 45 and taken down at the 47-yard line. He was trying to go to Rakowski. Rakowski kind of looked like he broke off the pattern. And Fuller just sailed it right into the middle, right into the defensive back's hands. Now, do you put that one on Fuller or do you put it on Rakowski? It looked like Rakowski just kind of broke the pattern off. It could have been him reading it, saying, well, I'm not going there. I'm going to turn it to the outside. But Fuller read him going inside and threw it right to the DB. Your quarterback is frustrated now, Jim. I see his, the head coach and they're talking voicelessly to each other. He's frustrated. And that's the last thing you want when your team, team leader is frustrated like that. But welcome to the world of Western State. This Chance Fuller's never played against Western State. He's thrown a ton of touchdown passes at Fort Hayes and at CSU Pueblo, but... He's not seen this kind of defense. Yeah, it's obvious. He thought Rakowski was going to keep coming over the middle. And instead, he threw it right into the safety's hands. So it's first and 10 Mountaineers. Again, great field position, this time for their own 47-yard line, leading the game 20-7 to with a minute 53 to go here in the first half. Play action. Avoids pressure. Right side, man, is open, and it is caught at the 32-yard line. Just a question if he secured it getting it to the ground, and he did. Great catch. Mountaineers come up. That was DJ Allen on the catch. Handed into the middle. Butler breaking a tackle. Inside the 25, he's right at the sticks. Again, now that's having him wrapped up and letting him get away. He's right at the 22. Could be a first down here. They haven't moved the chains yet. It's got to be a first down, doesn't it? Well, they're holding things up here. Yep. And yeah, now they move the yeah. chains. That's simple math right there. Ten yards. So first and ten Mountaineers from the 22-yard line. Play action. Nash, here comes pressure, just dumps the ball out. He was decked on the blitz that time, was bone. Safety blitz, and he was right in there, and good job by Nash just to get rid of it. So second down and 10. For the Mountaineers. They lead the game 20-7, to seven, a minute 21 to go here in the first half. Trying to add on here. Remember, they get the ball first to start... The second half as well. They run the ball into the middle. And, oh, almost breaking free there was Butler. But he's tripped up just enough by Bone, who gets the stop. So third down now and 10. This game's eerily familiar to last week, at least this first half. Western just taking time off the clock here. Thunderwolves electing not to take a timeout here. Clock.
clock running. We're down to 15 on the play clock, 48 to go in the half. Western may just take it all the way down and use their last time. Nope. Now they come out, they're going to run the play. Play clock down to five. Nash takes the snap. Looks right, fires right. Man is wide open. Tries to make a move up the sideline. Breaks a tackle inside the 10, inside the five, down to the one-yard line. Another missed tackle by the Thunderwolves right at the sticks. How does and guy Montez get gets it all the way down to the goal line. How does he get that wide open with that much time? So now it's first and goal from the one. They come right up to the line of scrimmage. And now the Thunderwolves do take a timeout with 21 seconds to go here in a half. We'll keep it right here. But, man, as a, you got the man there to make the tackle short of the first down. You missed the tackle, and he gains another 10 yards and gets it right down to the one-yard line. Got to make tackles. We're body Western, like, Western isn't missing tackles. No, they, they have are. not missed a tackle today. And we're body language guys, Jim. And the body language of the Thunderbolts right now is terrible. Their heads are down. Their shoulders are slumped. Yeah, they're getting it handed to them right now. Now we'll see if they can come up with a stand here somehow. Western does have one timeout left at their disposal. I was kind of astonished the Thunderwolves didn't take a timeout on third down. Maybe just still just under yeah. a minute to go. If they get the stop, then they're going to get the ball back, a chance to put, you know, to do something with it. But it's almost as if they said, you know what, our offense can't do anything anyway. Let's just let time run out. Western still gathered around their sideline. Well, quietly thinking to himself, Jazz Baines has to go and say, yep, this is what you're missing. Didn't take me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's uh, this that's game's a little silent motivation for him, well. for him. First and goal from the one. And his players are saying, aren't you glad we, you stayed? Quarterback sneak. Thunder will stuff him. Second effort tries to push in. And does. And touchdown is signaled. Had him Second stuffed. effort that time by Nash. They had him stuffed a yard back into the backfield, but then he just kept turning and stuck it across the goal line for the touchdown, and he celebrates. Western Colorado has reduced this game down to the old school football. Joe, who's going to be more physical? And they're definitely the more physical football team out today. It's not even close. Here's the extra point try upcoming. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. So 18 seconds to go here in the first half. It's 27 to 7. You know, last week they spotted a team 21 points. Today, that's for sure. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to make some big time adjustments on this one. And I don't know how you adjust physicality. I guess that's, that's what you got to do is they're just getting manhandled right now shoved around the field and you know the defense held up for the most part of that first half but as your offense continues just to give the ball back to the team your defense can only hold up for so long joe eventually when you're out on the field so long like that you get worn down and that's what we kind of saw here at the end of this first half they just could not put up a good enough battle yeah I, i've noticed that chance fuller has not checked down to many receivers he's kind of gone with his first look Here's McGarity, a chance on the return across the 15, 20, 25, and hit down hard there, down to 12 seconds to go here in the half. Now there's some woofing going on out there. It, it's no time to talk back if you're a Thunderwolf. I saw Howard Russell looking back over the sideline. John was somebody, but Howard, you're down 20, buddy. Yeah, and, and it's been an easy 20. You've made it easy for your opponent. Thunderbolt's only spark in the game was the punt return. Yeah, you made it easy on Western State in this first half, and that's something you, you have to change at halftime. Fuller from the gun. He'll just give it to Martinez up the middle. And second effort has him out around the 30, 31-yard line, and that's where he'll be stuffed, but that'll be the final play. Martinez never did go to the ground. He ends up on his feet. Play has ended here in the first half. 
27 to 7 is our halftime score. It's been all Mountaineers. Western Colorado leads the pack 27 to 7. Back with our halftime show. It all comes your way next on Fox Sports Pueblo. You're listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Welcome back to the Thunder Bowl 27 to 7. Western Colorado on top. And they got on top in a big time hurry in this game. Blocked a punt. Five yard drive for a touchdown. Ensuing kickoff. Thunderwolves fumbled. They got a field goal. Thunderwolves did have a little spark when Cook had the uh, long punt return to make it 10 to 7. Then stopped him a couple times. It kind of held serve there. But late in the first half, Thunderwolves again, another. Kind of a botched punt play. Gave them a free field goal, and then they get a touchdown late. Just just too much for the Thunderbolts defense to overcome in this game. Well, at least in the last two games, special teams has been a problem. Whether it's been on kick coverage, punting, punt block, hammer time. CSU Pueblo definitely has some areas to shore up on the special teams. And, and you know, that's a... We talk about special teams all the time. We've seen games won and lost because of them, and right now... Like you said, they've made it very easy for Western Colorado to be up 20 at half. Benny Bash is going to have a scoreboard show. That's going to come your way next. We remind you at one time here again, Thunderwolves are down 27-7 to here at the halftime break to Western Colorado. You're listening to Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. End job chance for the return here. Cook has it. Nice cut across the 30, 35. Makes a man miss. Here we go. 40, 45, 50. He's got one man to beat. He's got blockers out in front. He's down the sideline. Touchdown, Thunderwolves. Just another brick in the wall that was set up for Andrew Cook. And that was indeed the highlight of the first half for the Thunderwolves. The uh, long punt return from Andrew Cook just doing what Cookie does. Joe, so often in his career that we've been watching him, and really that's the only thing wrong that Western Colorado did in the first half was punt it to him. One time. Yeah, and they, then they, they learned a lesson. From him. <laughs> it, it, I, we were waiting for the stats to come at halftime. We usually get them at the end of the quarter. They came at halftime, and uh, they're worse than I thought. That's And I thought they were going to be bad, but they're worse than I thought. If you're a CSU Pueblo fan, if you are from Western State, that was as good a first half as you could ever imagine. Yeah, and some of those numbers, uh, first downs, 10-4 to 4 in favor of Western Colorado. They only have 38 yards on the ground, but astonishingly, 147 through the air. So 185 total offense. Thunderwolves only 15 yards rushing on 15 carries. 54 through the air, 69 yards in total offense. Some of the uh, other numbers, 16-21 time of possession to 13-39. Uh, three of nine on third down for Western Colorado. Not that great. Thunderwolves three of eleven though. Western is five for five though in the red zone. But you know, three of those drives started in the red zone. So it's say, not like it's that big a deal. No, and and, the, and they're only three of nine. But <laughs> some of those third downs were inside the the twenty. Yeah, and they're they've been able to make enough plays in the passing game. Uh, a couple of just circus catches in that first half. Then the, down there along the goal line, that one late there to got him that late touchdown on the third down and what was it, about third and eight. And just found a guy wide open on side. But again, Joe, you miss tackles. Uh, that, that's been the killer. I think that's one of the most eye-opening things in this game to me is Western. They don't miss tackles. I mean, they put you on the ground. Thunderwolves have missed a number of them in this game. And, and we haven't talked enough about how good Western has played in the trenches. Yeah. Both sides of the ball. Their offensive line has done an outstanding job, and their defensive line has done even a better job against CSU Pueblo. So right now, CSU Pueblo is getting pushed off the ball, both sides of the ball. Yeah, and in particular the defense, I think it's their defense in the second quarter, when you're out there so long, it just seems like they're up against it. And sooner or later, you lose that will, Joe. You, you, you know your offense isn't going to do a damn thing. So then you got to say, do I got to keep selling out? For them to just keep going three and out, sooner or later, you're going to break. And I think that's what happened to the Thunderwolves defense there late in the first half, giving up those uh, couple of touchdowns. Well, Western only has four minutes of more of possession time in that first half. But they didn't need it because they had short fields. Every t every situation CSU Pueblo's defense was in was a high-stress situation. So now the defense for the Thunderwolves will come out here in the second half. That's what they got to do immediately. they got to get a stop. 
get back out their offense out on the field and go down and score and somehow try to make a game of it, anything less than that, then the game's just going to get away from them. And we saw this last week. They were down at half against a very good team on the road. They made some halftime adjustments, especially on special teams. Yeah. They, they shored up their kicking game in 12 minutes. <laughs> they, they found a chalkboard and said, we'll figure this out, and they did. So you hope that they, they have a chance to figure that out, maybe get, catch their breath a little bit, maybe some Epsom, not, not Epsom, so breathing, the stuff they put under your nose. Smelling salts. Smelling salts, that's what you need. They, they, they should be passing those out right now in the Thunderbolts locker room. Other scores from around the conference today. Mesa holding on against South Dakota Mines. They've led it all day, but the lead is down to eight now. It's 38-30 to 30 in the fourth quarter. Highlands leads Fort Lewis at halftime, 17-3. to 3. That's been at halftime in eternity. I'm sure they're a little bit further along than that. Mines over Adams State today, 70-7. to 7. Didn't they put up 84 against them last year? I mean, that's been a tough two years for Adams State trying to stop Colorado Mines. The Ore Diggers will be here in town next Saturday. That's our next... Uh, broadcast here on Fox Sports Pub. It'll be a 2 o'clock kickoff once again next week as the Thunderbolts hope to have a miracle comeback in this game and then somehow take on the Ore Diggers next week. If you lose this ball game and then have to take on Mines, man, it just adds a kind of a, oh, my God, what's going to happen here for well, the rest they, of this yeah, year? It's a mirror of last season. Yeah. One and three after four games, and you're in playoff mode until the end of the season. All right. 27 to 7 is our halftime score. We'll come back. We'll have the second half kickoff. It all comes your way next on Fox Sports Pueblo. You're listening to KUBE Pueblo, Fox Sports 1350. Listen on the free iHeartRadio app for all your music, sports, talk, and podcasts. Free never sounded so good. You're listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Welcome back to the Thunderbolt, 27 to 7. Western Colorado with the lead. Teams finishing off their warm-ups here to get this second half underway. But uh, we kind of said it, Joe. It's imperative the Thunderbolts' defense must stop them, get the ball for their offense. Hopefully, in some decent field position for a change, and maybe go down and get a touchdown, make a game of it. Everything that you think has to happen has to happen because western will not allow you back in much longer and you have your window to get back into this game is very brief it's the very first start the first four or five minutes of the fourth uh, the third quarter that's your window to get back in and show that show that you want to play now you just hope that evan lyons kicks it out of the end zone pins him back as i say pins him back to the 25 yeah exactly that would, that would feel like pinning him back to the 25 i think one time in this game they did start at the 25 that was after the thunderbolts got the touchdown and they uh, kicked it deep into the end zone they did start from their own 25 so that was their only time they had anywhere close to bad field position in this ball game thunderbolts a number of times started inside their own 20 yard line and we're up against it be interesting to see what changes CSU Pueblo has made and and some of them might be the six inches between your ears yeah you know how do you coach that yeah we'll see if, if somebody who the team leaders are that uh, kind of get them going I saw late in the first half Daniel Bone is trying to fire up the defense a little bit making some stops I'm sure he's not he's got that type personality but not going to stand for this but Joe, you and I kind of talking off mic that we, we question, I question the health of uh, Chance Fuller. I just don't think he looks right today. Well, I think, his, I think there's something wrong with his shoulder. The ball just isn't coming out of there. Well, that's what I was looking at is not so much he looks like he's running around healthy or whatever, but there doesn't seem to be much zip on the ball, and he throws the ball hard. You know, he's, he's thrown the ball through his receivers a few times in the last couple of weeks, and I don't see that today. And, you know, these precision routes, if the ball's a, a fraction late, it's going to be inter incomplete or intercepted. Yeah, there were a couple of what, what you call an easy throw in the first half. Just a couple little turn-ins that he dismissed. And then, of course, the interception. Now, on the interception, I don't know if that was him or Rakowski or they just weren't on the same page, but he definitely he threw it over the middle of the field, and Rakowski had kind of broken the route off, and it just looked bad. So there we go, Thunderbolts to kick it off. They're moving right to left as we look at it here in the second half. 
Western will be moving toward the open end of the stadium. Receiving with the kids frolicking on the uh, Thunder Hill over there. That always looks like a blast rolling down that hill. Good leg. Kick is five yards deep into the end zone, so that means it'll come out to the 25. What I noticed, Joe, is a few older people, more grown-ups are sliding down the hill now. I think they, they're realizing, go to your inner child and slide down the hill on a pizza box. You know why that is, Jim? It's 27 to 7. <laughs> That's right. you got to entertain yourself. I just did see a guy do a face plant. He tried to go face first on the uh, cardboard, and he overshot it and then face planted into the Thunder Hill. They're all surfing it now. Instead of going down on their butts, they're, they're surfing, and that's just a little bit dangerous. So first and ten for the Mountaineers. They start from their own 25-yard line. Drew Nash, the ultimate game manager, and then some. He's a big, strong, physical quarterback. Has made all the good throws in this game as well. Play action, gets the pass away, and it's caught. And speaking of physical, the big tight end out across the 30 to the 34-yard line. They ran that play in the first half for about 20. He gains nine this time. He's shaking up this time as he had a, quite a collision that time with Dixon. But it's the uh, big tight end for Western Colorado, Daniel Parsick. This is where you tip your hat to Drew Nash because that was a safety blitz again from Pittman coming in off the nickel, coming in right in his face. So that RPO, he sees it, just dumps it off. And Parsik is up. Parsik, 230-pound sophomore. Yeah, that was Johnstown, Colorado. We kind of mentioned that's this Western Colorado mentality. And, you know, if you didn't get recruited by the big dogs at CSU Pueblo, well, I'm going to go over to Western Colorado and I'm going to prove that they made a mistake not giving me a look. And I kind of get that feeling a lot of their players are in that boat. Thing is, they've gone out and got a couple of skilled guys. The quarterback, junior college transfer, the uh, running back, he's from Los Angeles. Or, excuse me, he's from Alaska, the wide receiver from Los Angeles. Here's a look left, fire left, low and away, but it's caught for the first down. Only needed a yard to get three. Well, that might have been his worst delivery of the day, but it still picks up the first down. Jim, Eli Pittman at, at the, the far corner is seven yards off the ball off the line of scrimmage on that play, and they only needed two. So first and 10 for the Mountaineers from their own 37-yard line. Long count. Play action. Pass. Right. Caught. Collision. Right at the sticks. No gain. Second down and 10. Isaiah Pittman again staying home that time and not going. Makes the play. That was the backup tight end, Jeremiah Garman. He's a junior out of Los Angeles. He's a big guy, 6'6". Six, six. Listed at 220 pounds. He lines up on the left side in the tight end formation this time. Double wide out left, single wide out right. Relatively tight formation here. Everybody almost within the hash marks. They run it around the left side. Good opening. Gain of about six for Devin Butler. Just makes the third down a lot more manageable. It's not the... A, Huge gain by any means, but it's not a negative play. Sets it up now for third and four. Corey McClellan, nice to see him in on that stop, but he's 15 yards off the ball to play to start. Dixon was shaken up for the Thunderbolts. He now is up and gets over into his cornerback position here on the left side. Third and four for the Mountaineers. Empty backfield. Trips right, single wide out, or double wide out left, rather. Bring a man in motion. Look left. Flush him from the pocket. They got him and sack him, and it's Hamrick. Money it's Hamrick. Just body slamming him right back at the 38-yard line. What a hit by Hamrick. When Monty hits you, you stayed hit. Well, and that's what they needed from their defense. It wasn't exactly a three and out, but it was close. So it brings up fourth down now and eight. They spotted at the 39-yard line. So Cook, he's been the uh, lone scorer, lone bright spot today for the Thunderbolts on the punt return. He stands at his own 20-yard line. They're going to go rugby style on this punt, and they're going to aim it toward the Thunderbolts sideline, shanked it, and that's out of bounds. Thunderbolts going to have great field position. It's got to be up here around the 40, 42-yard line, I would think. Right at the 40. Right at the 40. They always try to find an even spot, Joe. It's almost comical the way they do it. Well, he had a lot of help. <laughs> The field judge had a lot of help. He had six CSU Pueblo coaches showing him. 
exactly where that ball went out, where it crossed. So Thunder will start their best field position of the day here. Almost feel like this is a must touchdown drive right here. Down 27 to 7 with 12-13 to go in the third quarter. You put one on the board here, you might start to feel good about yourself. Double wide out to each side. Run the screen left side, caught by Cook. He gets up the sideline. He gets across the 45 to about the 48-yard line. So he picks up eight, second down and two. Better pass from Chance Fuller on that play. Again, though, throwing to the primary receiver. He has not checked down or licked anybody off today. Thunderbolt's trying to speed up the pace here already early in the half. They give it to Martinez up the middle, spins. He is right at the sticks. Might be short. Now nope, they're going to say move the chains. Touch the 50, mid midfield. That's all he needed to get right at the 50. So first and 10, Thunderwolves. Double wide out to each side. Same formation, not messing around. Martinez on the right hip of Fuller. Straight drop back, looks up the left sideline, fires it, caught Retzlaff. He's into Mountaineer territory inside the 35, down to the 30, stays on his feet. Five guys wrestling him around. They finally blow the whistle. They were trying to hold him up and just rip the ball away from him. Retzlaff, big physical wide receiver, all the way down to the 29. They were throwing haymakers. Yeah, they were giving the old, giving him the business. First and 10 at the 29. Same formation. They have not deviated here. Play action, pump fake, up the sideline. Retzleff's got another one inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line. Ball's coming out on time now, isn't it, Joe? You get a little confidence? And, and it looks like there's something on it. So first and 10, Thunderwolves, 17-yard line of the Mountaineers. Can they finish the drive off here? Now they change the play call. Got the defense a little bit back on their heels right now. I'd like to see him spring Martinez right up the middle on a run here. Straight drop back. Fuller looks, fires over the middle, and behind the intended receiver. He had Retz left over and threw it behind him. If he throws it on target out in front of him, it's an easy first down. This is where I call my own number if I'm chance. I take, I need a quarterback draw or a designed rollout run to get that defense on its heels just a little bit. So second down and 10, the first what you would call a negative play of the drive. Low snap, give it to Martinez up the middle, breaks a tackle, puts his head down. He's down close to the 10-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 11. So it's going to be third down now and a long three. Four down territory, you got to believe here for the pack. And a snap infraction. The ball comes rolling back there over the middle, and it is right at the sticks. First down, somehow they make the completion to Rakowski. That snap was whiffed. It just rolled back, but alertly Fuller just picked up the grounder and hit Rakowski. Well, and nobody on either side moved. Yeah, it's like there was no reaction. I was waiting for like a false start flag or a snap infraction. The ball just rolled back to him. Stevie Kroll in now to quarterback inside the red zone. They like to run him out of this formation. Takes the snap. They give it to Martinez up the middle. Cuts across the five. Touchdown! Great cut there by Martinez on into the end zone, and the Thunderwolves do what they had to do here on this first drive of the second half. Signs of life. Well, you get that defense thinking about the run with the quarterback, and it sprung Martinez right into the secondary easy touchdown. How about his vision to cut back like that? He saw the one little lane, and, boy, that he doesn't need much of a space. Now that's got to give the defense a little lift now. The offense take it right down the field. Extra point try up coming here by Willig. Good snap, falls down, kick is up. And it is good. And we learned our lesson from the first half. We're not getting our media time out here, so we'll hold it in the bank, hold it in reserve. Although to me, that common sense says, do the media timeout now at 10-15. You've got a touchdown. It's a natural spot to have one. Now you may end up, Joe, where you don't get it. That's, well, that's what I'm thinking. That's not our call. I know. But now, but I use logic. You know, I'm a logical course. guy. But now this is where you want to rinse and repeat. You want Evan Lyons to kick it out of the end zone. You want a defense to hold him. Another offense. Is, you got to you got to build on that. It's, yes. Are you back in the game? Absolutely, you're back in the game. Well, Hammer got the sack on that last possession, and it just seemed to light a fire under the tunnel. But 
Joe, it was noticeable. Fuller's passes had a little bit more zip on him there to start that second. Even warming up at halftime, he just looked like, man, there's just something wrong there. You know, and he loves Reggie Rat Retzloff. Yeah. Loves him. It's a great combination. I mean, you get Cookie on one side or in the slot and Retzloff out there and Rakowski, that's three good weapons. And don't forget C.K. Paulus. So, I yeah. mean, you got four targets that you you got to just be in love with. So now the Thunderwolves to kick off. It's 27 to 14 now, Western Colorado with the lead. Here's the kick. High booming kick. And it's into the end zone for the touchback. So Western will start from their own 25 yard line. I think you had it right, Joe. Just signs of life. Yep. Just three words. Rinse, signs rinse, of life. Rinse and repeat. Now the fans starting to come to life a little well, bit. They're going to try to get the defense going here. Players are trying to get them pumped up. You don't see that very often. Bryce and Tori, a little redshirt freshman out of Vista Peak, running up and down the sidelines, trying to get his crowd fired up. Western trots right up to the line of scrimmage here. They lead the game 27 to 14, their second possession here of the second half. They might go back to the run here. They're going to go un unbalanced right with those two huge tight ends. I don't think they were set for a full second there. No flag comes out. They throw it left side. It's caught. Gain of about six on the play. That tight end never got set, Joe, on this right side, but they got away with it when Snap. they shifted. He snapped it off a quick, didn't he? Yep. Again. And Phil Veal's right in the line judge's face saying, hey, man, he's got to be set. And he wasn't set. And the referee trying to argue, his but you're wrong, Mr. Linesman. Second down and four. Film will show it. Here's the handoff up the middle and maybe a yard on the play. I don't think I can get in trouble for pointing that out because Phil Vigil was arguing the same thing I pointed out. Third down and two. Upcoming for the Mountaineers. Bringing in some beef. Watch Monty Hamrick on the left side. 11 Thunderwolves at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're all up, aren't they? And they are going to run it with the quarterback. Puts his head down. He's got the first down. It's a good thing he kept it, Joe, because they had the running back plastered in the backfield but able to make enough room there for the quarterback Nash to get the first down. Drew Nash has made great reads today. You know this is an RPO offense so the run pass option. So that means the quarterback has to make that decision and he's made good decisions the entire day. So it's first and 10 at the 36 yard line for the Mountaineers. They lead it 27 to 14 man in motion to the right side. They give it up the middle and tripped up coming through the middle of the line that time. The backup back, Hogan, gets forward. His knee was down, though, back at the 39-yard line. Only a gain of three. Well, he had a big open. If he stays on his feet, he might have scored there. It's like he had a head start. So second down and seven now for the Mountaineers. They're down to 8.20 to go here in the third quarter. 27-14, to 14, Western State on top. I know, I know. It's Western Colorado. Old habits, hard to break. I still call Mesa State. That's right. Second and seven. Straight drop back. They look left. Fire it left. Oh! Almost intercepted. That would have been six. Good read there. Jumping the route. Eli Pittman been setting him up all day with that. He's been playing seven yards off the ball. That time he jumped the route. It was just a stop route. Seven yards down the field. Right through his hands. Boy, would that have changed things in a big time hurry. Because he would have scored easily. Third down now and seven. Can the Thunderwolves get him off the field again here? Biggest play of the game right now for the Thunderwolves defense. They show they're going to rush five. They adjust the protection. And then there's moving along the line yeah. offside by the Thunderwolves. Pass left side, back shoulder throw incomplete. But it's going to be another chance here for Western Colorado. Thunderwolves were in the neutral zone. See who the guilty party is. I don't know what the conference is about. 
It's just an offside call. Yeah, unusually long time there to talk that one over. Oh, oh. That's why. Illegal formation, only six on the line of scrimmage. That's why there was a conference. There we go. Yeah, well, we found out. I didn't see the other flag. Joe. I didn't either. It's like new life for both teams on this play. So third and seven from the 39-yard line. Empty backfield. Now they bring a man in to help. That's Hogan. Long count here. They're going to fake the run. They look over the middle. Fire over the middle. Deflected and incomplete. Oh, John Nushi had his mitts on it. So the Thunderwolves defense comes up with a stop. 7.51 to go here in the third quarter. Now you feel like it's a game. With that stop and you got that first score of the second half, now you feel like if you can get another score on this drive, look out. And the punter takes a dive. Ball handled by Cook at the 26-yard line. You know, they should get an embellishment penalty for a punter faking it like that. Yeah, because they both the, the referee and the umpire both are like, no. Come on, dude. Timeout on the field. 7.44 to go here in the third quarter. 27 to 14, Western Colorado on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And welcome back to the Thunderbolt. 27 to 14, Mountaineers with the lead. Thunderwolves have the ball at their own 26-yard line. They scored a touchdown on their first possession of the second half. Can they turn the trick here again and really make a game of it? It's already a game, I suppose, but I'm saying really make a game of it. You, you, you score here, here, things yeah. are more than interesting because then yeah. Western's on their heels. But give credit to the pack defense the last two series. I yeah. mean, that was that's what they had to do. But you know what? That's exactly what they did last week at Grand Valley. We keep talking about that because we were at Grand Valley. That's right. We were there witnessing it. Yeah. Well, Fuller, he was getting the ball out on time and a little quicker in that last possession. Helps when things are working, though. That's part of those halftime adjustments, the patterns they were running. Here we go from the gun. Give it to Martinez, trying to bounce him outside. He's taken down. He just cannot get away from that one last tackler in the middle. And somehow getting his feet around him, Kendall Lightfoot getting the stop for a gain of about a yard. They One yard that looked like it might be 30. And that's his forte is breaking that first initial tackle. He goes in motion this time to the left side. Fuller now looks like pumps, goes up the sideline and threw that one wide to the right side. Did he get a foot down? Yes, he did. They are going to conference about it. And the longer they conference, it's got to be it. No, now they say incomplete. Maybe. <laughs> I thought it was incomplete right from the get-go. I, I thought it was a miracle that they were talking it over. There's a lot of sideline. <laughs> it's really white right there where he went down. I don't know if they put it up on. Here's the look on. the. Well, the camera wasn't there in time and didn't have his feet. So replay didn't do you any good there when you can't see his feet. Third down and nine. It was a tremendous grab. Just ran out of real estate. They show rushing six here. Here they all come. Over the middle. Cook has it. He's blasted at the 31. He's five yards short of the first down. That was a route by necessity there as Fuller was under heavy pressure. And you're just hoping you can get it to Cook and maybe have him break a tackle. But that's, this doesn't happen against Western Colorado. No, and you got to hit him on the fly. He's got to be able to have that step already. And he did not have that. So fourth down. Thunderwolves go three and out and have to punt the ball away. And that has been an adventure today. They've had one block cleanly, one partially blocked. One time the punter was tackled. So three botched punts in this game by the Thunderwolves. Long count this time. Adad Play clock down to four. Adad looks over to the side. And they're... Oh, they call timeout on a punt. 
It's almost like they were trying to draw them off or something there, but they just didn't have what they want. Plus, you know, when you've botched a couple punts in this game, goes that saying that you want to be careful about it all. So we'll keep it right here. I, in a game that you're trailing, to burn a timeout in the second half on a punt, that's not good. Now you hope that doesn't come back to haunt, but chances are it always seems like it does, doesn't it, Joe, when you have to waste one like that? It always seems like it comes back to haunt you. be two minutes left in the fourth quarter, you go, oh, man. Remember that timeout they took with 625 in the well, third? It was like the Broncos haunt? game last week. They'd used up two of them you yep. know, early, and they, it just comes back to haunt you in a close game. Well, Western has to be careful here. They have jumped offside today on a punt. But the problem is, it was fourth and five and a half. Thunderwell still had to punt it on the next down after the penalty call. Where's Michael Riston when you need him, Joe? Direct snap and run around the right end for about 20. Big Josh Bridal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they seem to find the biggest guys they can get for fake punts. Now they're signaling they're going to try to get a little bit tighter formation here are the Thunderwolves for protection here. Here's the snap. Punt is away. High punt. Got a little room, though. Takes it to the 20. Gets up the field. 25 to the sideline. Third. There's a block in the back. No flag comes. Man, oh, man. You could hear the fans even yelling, Joe. That was an obvious block in the back right there, wasn't it? It sure looked like he had him engaged from the side or the back. I mean, it seems like they call it all the time on special teams, and then when it's obvious, they don't. It's just kind of weird, right? And Phil Vigil is incredulous over there on the sideline talking. And he's just, man, what are you looking at, dude? And man with the F on his back says, I'll tell you what F stands for. Yes. That's you, uh, <laughs> well, they did get a hold on the return team. The flag is somewhere else on the field. It wasn't over here. So they will move him back 10. Well, the flag is all the way back here at the line of scrimmage. Oh, well, there you go. The foul oh, is on, the, on the Thunderwolves. Team. So a 10 yard mark off makes it out to the 40 yard line. So good field position for Western Colorado. Well, that changes you, things up a little you bit. You thought Phil was hot before? <laughs> My goodness. He is still working. Now he's working L. You know, he was working F earlier. Now he's gone to L. Line judge, field judge. So first and 10 Mountaineers from their own 40-yard line. They lead it 27 to 14. They're going to give it up the middle. The bruising back, that's Drew Montez. He's also a wide receiver. So they try to get it in his hands any way possible. And he gains, that's a good idea to get it yeah. in his hands. He gains eight. He knows what to do with it when he gets the ball, that's for sure. That was always my argument with, uh, remember Centennial High School here in town with Hancock. He was a wide receiver. I'm going, man, you cannot have that guy playing wide receiver. He's the best athlete on the team. you got to get it in his hands sometimes. Second down and seven. Maybe it wasn't him. It was another, I, I can't remember. big tall guy, Joe. Wasn't it, was it Hancock? Well, One of the Hancock brothers? Unless it was Quincy Wofford. Here's a run around the left side. Oh, breaking oh, tackles, no. getting to the sideline. 40, 35, out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. Yeah, because Hancock did play quarterback. Maybe it was Wolford, Joe. It was one of those. They made him point guard because he was yeah. so he could touch the ball on every possession of yeah. basketball. So it's first and 10 at the 34-yard line of the Thunderwolves. So Western Colorado on the move here. Thunderwolves somehow need to come up big on defense here. Need a turnover. You know, they had that play diagnosed and let it go. And in motion to the right. Like a long hand off to the right side. Nice cut inside. He's got a first down and more. Great cut that time by Butler. He just split the defense and knifed his way down to the 21-yard line. What a run. You don't normally see Corey McClellan miss a tackle, and he just whipped on that one. He had it. He was in the backfield with him. He just missed him. Darius McMore making the stop. So first and ten Mountaineers. They lead the game 27 to 14. 435 to go. Here in the third quarter. 
Double wide out left, single wide out right. Lone back on the right hip of Nash. Now sends that man in motion to the right side. And now, what do we got going here? It's got to be a false start because the linemen were down in their set stance and they all came up. You can't come out of your set position. The officials were... Uh, it's almost like they were caught off guard. Did, they, did he really move? Yeah, he did move. We got to throw the flag. I think it was the uh, right guard, uh, Zach Brumfield, I think is the guy that came up out of his stance. So first and 15 from the 26. They give it up the middle. This is Montez. And he gains... About four down to the 22 yard line. So, yes, Montez, he is a wide receiver, but they want to get his hands on the ball a few extra times a game. And that's what they're doing here. He's caught seven passes on the year, does have a touchdown. Second down and 11 from the 22 yard line. 27 to 14. Mountaineers with the lead. 3.30 to go here in the third quarter. Two backs in the backfield, double wide out right. Relatively tight formation here, though, by Western Colorado. They're going to throw it right side. This is Montez. Hurdles the defender, but he's taken down. Pretty good stop that time by Pittman. He got enough of him to get Montez on the ground at the 18-yard line. Still kind of an impressive-looking play by Montez. Well, he's just such a physical specimen. I mean, big, strong, athletic. He's out of North Las Vegas, Nevada. I wonder if he's had a winner in Gunnison yet. <laughs> it's true. It's third down now and seven. Third and seven from the 18-yard line for the Mountaineers. Thunderwolves creeping up along the line of scrimmage. Looks like they might send five here this time, maybe six. They send five. They look left. They're going on a corner route and a lot of pushing and shoving. And no flag. That could be just as easily offensive pass interference that time. As Montez in a battle over there with Pittman, I believe. Yeah. Eli Pittman was in single coverage, and they're, he's waving at him. I don't know if I'd be waving down 20 or down uh, 13. Well, that's a good piece of officiating there right there because neither one was gaining an advantage. No. They both had their hands pushing and shoving on each other. So a 35-yard field goal attempt. He's missed one today. He's made two, though. Two of three. From the right hash. Good snap. Ball's down. Kick is on the way. And it is good. 2.27 to go here in the third quarter. Western now leads it 30-14. to Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports Pueblo. Run you Stadler. are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Well, Joe, we've had some success from the fans today. We had a field goal just made for some tires, right? Is that what he just yeah, won? Yeah, former baseball player here at CSU Pueblo, Nick Runstadler, has to kick a field goal and gets $800 worth of tires from r, &R Tires, and it was good. That's a good day at the old uh, ball yard. And now he's talking over Paul Plinsky saying, Paul, yeah, that's, that's a good kick. Yeah, that's 800 bucks. He goes, you got any eligibility left? <laughs> yeah. $800 worth of tires. What is that? It depends on what you're driving, I guess. Well, that's, he's got that's one of those good, big jacked four. up trucks. That's, yeah, you know, he might get maybe three quarters of it done. That's four good ones, though. Yeah, it you should be. Decent tires for four, eight, 200 bucks a piece. It's better than a sharp stick in the eye. That's what it I is. said. It is better than getting po It's better than being down 16. And then now how about the beautiful Romola Dominguez out there doing the honors? Bro, she's been a hustler these last couple weeks at home. She's out there hawking tickets, running game day. She's got a definite future in PR, if not modeling, or maybe playing basketball, Both, yeah. coaching. She she does a lot. She has a lot of things going. Not many more personable players. Yeah, she is pack through and through. She loves she's being here. She's embraced being here. Yeah. Yes, she has. So here comes the kickoff. Squibber, taken by the up man. Again. <laughs> Tripped up by the 25. <laughs> kind of flying. Little, uh, give him some style points at the end there. Colton Rose, the redshirt freshman. 
now to Highlands Ranch. He went to Valor Christian High School, so he's used to winning. Yeah, big tight end. That's his second return of the day. Now he kind of looks like uh, Thunderwolves tight end of old. The Bubba fan. Yeah, kids. that's right. Just big dudes. Just leaning on people. So 28-yard line for the Thunderwolves. Down 30 to 14. So now you got to pretty much play perfect the rest of the way. Down 16. Give it up the middle to Martinez. Sprints. And you just can't make that last guy miss. Boy, they tackle so well. What a fundamentally sound ball club this Western Colorado team is. Gain of, you know, gain of six on a play, but it just felt like, hey, make that guy miss, get to the sideline, he might gain 25, 30 yards. You know, we have not seen Howard Russell or Adrian Soto today. Yeah, it's been backed by committee of one. Lucky to in motion to the left side. He resets. They fake it. They look right, and the ball's batted in the air. Look out! And they, uh, incomplete. They didn't get their hands around it. But big lineman trying to secure it there in the middle of the field. Ball was in the air in eternity. So it'll be third down and four now for the Thunderwolves. Fuller was looking left, tried to come back right, and the big lineman got his hand on it. It was in the air for what seemed like forever. It just hung up there. Third and four. Give the officials credit, though. They looked at the ground right away. Retzleff and Cook look over to the sideline for the play call here. Fuller takes the snap. He looks right instead. And there's a good lineman batting the ball down. He was just playing that all the way. They were trying to get it to Paulus. And now we have a stoppage in play here. What's going on here? We have a flag? I don't see one, but... They're having a conference, though. I do see one over on the... 42? Yeah, the well flag's yeah. well up the field. Might be a hold on the defense. They're chatting it up, though, with the Western Colorado bench. Here's the call. How was their pass interference so on a quick hitter? It must have been the the defensive back that was lined up on Paulus. It must have been a pick play. And that's why he was, he was wide open on the play, but it was batted down at the line of scrimmage. So evidently the with the two receivers over there in the slot on the right, one of them went down and just ran right into the guy that was over Paulus. I mean, that ball was out in a second. Here's the punt. Chance for the return, full head of steam across the 35, 40, look out, 45. Oh, and a, uh, might, be a, might be a horse collar. Nah. Yep, there comes the flag down. Going to be a horse collar tackle on the Thunderwolves. You know, some horse collar tackles are needed. If he doesn't do that, he's flying up the sideline. It looked like he had more jersey than the, the uh, shoulder pad area, which is what they really frown upon. So he just had his hand around the jersey. Now you can't referee intent. You have to referee actually what happened. So I don't think he had him around the, quote, horse collar. I think it was more just jersey. But let's see. Well, they're going to give him 15 regardless. Yeah. CSU, CSU Pueblo this season has been a highly penalized team. That's one of the areas that they need, have needed to shore up all season long. Well, that was just an awful punt, though. It was a low line drive, and the returner caught it with a full head of steam, and he got right up the sideline. And, you know, the man that called for the horse call, he had to do it. That, he had to get him on the ground somehow. Otherwise, he's running up the sideline, might score. So, again... The average field position start in this game has just been astonishing. Western Colorado starting from the Thunderwolves' 41-yard line. It's just easy to play football when you're always in the other team's territory. So first and 10 Mountaineers. They already lead the game 30-14, to 14, a minute 39 to go here in the third quarter. Nash sends a man in motion, and he bobbles a snap, now regains it. 
running for his life. He's going to run around the right side, flag down. Going to be a hold here on Western Colorado. That might be a makeup call. Officials talk it over. Flag is resting back here at the 45 yard line, four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Flag. Right tackle, they said. It said 78, but there is no 78, I don't think. Must be 79. Yeah, I think it was 79. That would be Zach Brumfield. So first and 20 from their own 49-yard line. Two backs in the backfield. Wide out to each side. Extra tight end in the slot to the left. Man in motion to the left side. They give it up the middle. And yeah, a decent run there. Just powering through there. Braden Hogan. Jim, the defensive ends are pinching. And that, the, that half a second delay is freeing up the inside. Daniel Bone is hurt. You don't want to see that. He was trying to support on run that time, and he is crumpled on the ground. And this just has the looks of being a major injury to me. I think it's his left leg. He's trying to roll over now. See, but they're going to go to work. They're going to go to work on the left leg. Working on his ankle. Seeing he's got some flexibility in there. He might have rolled underneath some the pile right there. Yep. Now they're able to straighten it out. Uh, checking up underneath his left knee now. The heart and soul of this defense. Yeah, this would be just huge injury. Pine he's Creek up. High School. And maybe just a cramp. Now he's going to run off. So, Joe, you know, sometimes, well, well we all do, we've talked about it. Sometimes the cramp is the worst feeling injury in the world. Feels like you're going to die. I, we talked about the other, I had one the other night, the left leg. I thought I was going to die. Sometimes you, these, and, and you, anybody who's played a sport in anything, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll hear pop. a pop. And you right away, fear. you're like, oh, what wait, happened? what was that? Yeah. And so, it, but yeah, he, he gets up he, after they made sure everything is okay. They got his legs straightened out. He gets it and just runs off. Took some inventory. And again, another huge down for CSU Pueblo's defense. I think we've said that for three quarters now. Second and 13 from the 44 yard line of the pack. 30 to 14, Western Colorado with the lead. Nash looks it over. Thunder will show blitz off the edge. Now they back out. Man in motion to the left. They hand it up the middle and nothing doing. Yeah, Scipio from his defense, left defensive end spot just collapsed the pile and made the tackle. Gain of a yard for Hogan. Daniel Bone didn't waste any time. As soon as that ball was on the ground, he was back out there. <laughs> this is amazing, isn't it? Sometimes you just, it just looked like at all the makings of being, oh, no, it looked like a season ender the way he was crumpled up and laying there, and then they straighten the leg out and says, I'm all right. That's the last play of the quarter. Time runs out. End of three from the Thunder Bowl. Western Colorado, they lead it 30 to 14. Back with the fourth quarter on Fox Sports Pueblo. Or two. We're sticking closer to home these days. That's not such a bad thing. Maybe it's time to reimagine your Colorado summer bucket list. Redefine what makes an adventure a lasting memory. Where history and culture can still be found in unique and authentic experiences. Where skiing isn't just for the snow. Where surfing isn't just for the ocean. Where the mountains meet the plains and the best of both worlds collide. That's Pueblo. We're Colorado. Ready You're to listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voice. Voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. 30 to 14. Thunderwolves down 16. Well, Joe, the pack did what we said they had to do to start the quarter. They got the stop, then got the touchdown. They just weren't able to build upon it. And you have to do that more than once. They have to do it now. You, every play on defense, the next play is the most important play of the game right yeah. now. Third and 11, you have to get a stop here. You have to get a stop, force Western State to punt. And score. I mean, there's no. 
Yeah, it's, 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 that what el- do we use to say? It's a moral imperative. <laughs> That's right. It's a moral imperative that they get a stop here, Jim. Yeah, they got to stop them. Then you got to you got to string together four great plays. You yeah. got to have two touchdowns, two two point conversions, just to get a tie. A lot of time left. Thunderbolts are signs of life. Looked better in the second half, obviously. No third and 11 for the Mountaineers from the 42-yard line. And they're going to give it up. The middle flag is down. Yeah, that would cut block or hold. And it's the first down, but it's all going to come back here. As that flag came out immediately, it was the old high-low block in the middle there by Western Colorado. You can't have a guy engaged and then hit him down low. Gary Seidenberger's like, he, you heard his helmet hit. Oh, they're calling it on CSU Pueblo. Are they going to call a defensive hold here? Boy, they are pointing at the Thunderwolves. During the play, holding on the defense. Oh. A defensive holding. Man, that flag came out in such a hurry, Joe. It was immediately it came out. Why would he be holding? So it marks it all the way down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Well, there goes your moral imperative. Oh, my goodness. Well, we'll be watching that one on the old television replay tonight, see if they, what happened there. That was crazy. Now, if you're Western, you run four plays, just run the ball. Of course, they'll throw it, but you should just run it, milk some clock. Straight drop back. They look right. Pump right. Sacked. Ball's loose on the deck. Thunderwolves had a chance at it. They whiffed. Did they get it on the second try? I don't think so. Let's see. Thunderwolves say they've got it. They're running. Well, now it's a guy coming off the field without his helmet. They did get the ball back. Western Colorado did. That was a bull rush, I'm guessing, by Scipio. It looked like the pack was trying to scoop it instead of just falling on the thing. They were trying to pick it up, and when they whiffed on the pickup, that allowed Western to get back out on top of it. couple of those moments here in the second half. Remember the, the interception that was in the hands of Pittman? Couldn't quite secure it, and there, a fumble. They had the chance. Second down and 13. Now they're going to give it up the middle and going nowhere. That's smart play. That's <laughs> Joe, I was just as tough. Sometimes coaches boggle your mind, don't you? You're, it's just, you know, you're up in the game by 16, and you try a pass play, and you get sacked. You almost screw the whole thing up. By just trying to be cute. Just sort run of, the ball three times, kick of, the field goal. Sort of Bob Stitt from the gun on the one. <sighs> it's just maddening what they do sometimes. They just overthink it. Third down and 12. Nash takes it straight drop back. Steps up into the pocket, fires over the middle. He's got him, and he dropped it at the two-yard line. It was Montez wide open. Would have had the first and goal. Might have even scored. Now, you know, that's why I always love Joe. He's patting on his chest. Yeah, it's my fault. My, yeah, we know it's your fault. You dropped the ball. Well, you don't also, have to tell us. He also had John Nusi, a middle linebacker, in coverage. That's never good. No. That's a getting out schemed right there because you do not want a middle linebacker trying to cover Montez. What a strike, though, by Nash. He stepped right into the pocket and delivered a fastball. And Montez just whiffed. Fourth down. Field goal attempt here. 37-yard try. Ball's down. Kick is up. Looked like he hooked that one. Hits the upright. No good. There was your quick hook into the woods, Joe. Yep. A little, your baby draw turned into a snappy. A little sniper. So Thunderwolves still have life. Playing a little blue suede now for the Thunderwolves. Then they stop. <laughs> so here we go. Right out to the line of scrimmage. 21-yard line for the Thunderwolves. Double wide out each side. This is the formation they made hay with that first drive of the second half. Fake it, pass left, caught. 
Gets uh, Cook. And Cookie with a, just a quick hitter, and he gets six, seven. Murkowski and Ratzliff are wide to the right. Paulus and Cook to the left. Second down and three. Straight drop back. They give it to Martinez up there. A nice cut there. He's got the first down. Out across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. First and 10 for the pack. Clock rolls. 12.45 to go. Remember the new timing rules in college football this year. The clock does not stop on first downs now anymore. Keeps on rolling until the final two minutes of the game. Then it'll stop. Straight drop back. They look left. Fire left. And not on the same page where Cook. Cook went forward. in. Paulus took off. And the ball was thrown like a, yeah. an out. Yeah, forward thought it was going to be a little sideline route. So second and ten. Not all that bad. It stops the clock. Second and ten from the 20 or 32 yard line. Beg your pardon. Martinez in motion to the right. They look right. They come over the middle, and it's Rakowski. He's got the grab across the 35 to about the 38, where forward progress is marked down. So a gain of six. It'll be third down and four. I don't know if it's four down territory yet, but if you get close to the first down here, you almost feel like you got to go for it. Oh, I think it is. Fourth and four, maybe not, but if they get a couple here or three, then I think you've got to think about it. Time dripping away here, though. The Thunderbolts having trouble getting the play call in they won. They come in with a little bit of a heavy package here on third down and four. Extra tight end in the set. And he's not thrown to a tight end tonight. Now they're going to change the play call. Now they set. Fuller takes a snap. He gives it to Martin up the middle, and that goes for no gain. Actually lost two yards on the play. And the coaches next door are making a racket on our wall there, Joe. Yeah, about time to put a, foot, a fist through one. So now we got an injury for Western Colorado. It looks like Kendall Lightfoot is cramping. He's up now trying to trot off. It was almost, Joe, like they were thinking in my mind there where they were saying, well, we're going to go for it on fourth down. We might as well make the fourth down as short as possible. But you don't plan on losing two yards on a running play. No, they Western State blew that. Lightfoot was on the play to blow it up. Paid the price. Well, it was kind of straight. The Thunderbolts came out with the, their version of the heavy package, I guess, two tight ends. And it just, it just looked like a strange formation for third and four. And... It, it looked run, and they ran run, and Western State defense run. Western State running to the ball, running in and out. Still got a lot of life in their legs. Thunderbolts are going to punt here now with it being fourth and six. Punt is away. Not a Bad very good punt. one. Handled at the 30, and not much of a return because the punt only went about... 35 yards. Well, Braden Steamer made the play, and he's the long snapper. Jake Ludwig, one of my favorite long snappers at CSU Pueblo history, he used to lead the, want to be one of the team leaders in tackles because he was, you can't touch them. Right. He's just, they, they that's why they're not such, he used to be a long snapper, he was a big physical guy because yeah, they, they take they a lot of pound punishment. on him. Yeah. But now they're, they're, Fast guys. I thought can't Jake, hit them. And I thought Jake might get a shot at him. You know, he got invited to an NFL camp, but I thought he might get it because he was a big guy and a good long snapper. So it's first and 10 Mountaineers from their own 31-yard line. Wide out to each side here. Double tight end set. That's a run set all the way here. And they're going to give it up the middle. And there's Seidenberger getting the stop, but able to pull that pile forward for about three. You know, we have noticed that there are no students here today. Yeah, it's uh, eerily silent across the way in the, the student the section. The student section is, is empty. And I know it's packed fest tonight, and everybody's probably getting rested up for Waka Flocka. So it almost makes you wonder if they just decide in mass, they say, you know what, we're not coming today. Yeah, I don't <laughs> what, what is it? It's either not all or nothing. A, not even a smattering. So second down and... Seven here for the Mountaineers. And they give it up the middle. And not much there. 
But second effort, able to move out across the 35 to the 36. It just keeps that clock bleeding away here. This is a proper thing to do for Western Colorado. Sure. They, they know that the Thunderwolves have to pull off four perfect plays here somewhere down the stretch. And you want to make as little a time as possible for them to do it. So we go under 10 minutes to go. It's 30 to 14, Western Colorado on top. It was 27 to 7 at halftime. Thunder was able to get the touchdown to get within 13, but then have given up a field goal and are down 16. Play action. Going to roll the pocket right. Nash, here comes late pressure. Pass incomplete. Looking for the dreaded flag. Oh, and it comes out now all of a sudden. Looking for the flag. Boy, it took forever for it to drop, and then it just kind of dropped in there maybe three seconds after the play was over. What the heck? Called on Eli Pittman. But that was so late, the play was over. Here's another look at it. Well, they don't have, that's the problem the with the television was, the coverage this year. They don't, have I mean, every, they don't have everybody on the screen. Here's a look. Oh, man, that's terrible. That's a brutal call. Well, and don't, don't, He wasn't even close to holding him. You can't referee assumption. You have to referee what you see. Well, and, and not after the play's already been blown dead. Oh, my goodness. So a new set of downs for Western Colorado. That's unbelievable. Here's a handoff around the right side. All that does is eat clock, and if you're if you're Western Colorado, that's what you want. The Mountaineers are playing this perfectly down the stretch. So it's second down and 12. Yeah, it was all, Pittman was running with the guy, and they both kind of stumbled and fell down. There was no way he was holding him. That's just being over on that side of the field and hearing a bunch of people saying, hey, 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 okay, flag. Second down and 12. Bobble the snap, but get it. And up the middle for two. So it'll be third down and 10 now for Western Colorado. Down to 8.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. It's 30 to 14, Western Colorado on top. You know, this is the same scenario as the last series, but it's three minutes later. They trot up to the line of scrimmage. Going to extend two wide outs to the left. Even their wide receivers are big and physical, Joe. You notice that? This is a big, gritty group. Third and nine. Straight drop back. Step up over the middle and all kinds of traffic in the middle. That could have been on the tight end holding the linebacker. Nushi was in coverage there. And Nushi more or less had him screened off. They were trying to get it... To the big one. That's, uh, of course, they're tied in Daniel Parsick. So, fourth down, Western will have to punt the ball away. Well, they learned their lesson from the first punt of the day when they kicked it to Cook. He ran it back to the house. They haven't kicked one to him since. Well, they did throw that real high one up and they blasted it. Remember back inside the 15 yard line? But for the most part, they've been directional kicks away from him. And they are angling to the right side this time, although he pulls it. It goes right down the middle. Cook with a chance, but he's hit immediately. Good coverage. Lucky he held on to that ball. It almost looks like he bobbled it on his way down. Victory David. Yes, his first name is Victory. Makes the stop for Western Colorado. Also Malcolm Wesley over there as well for the Mountaineers. So Thunderbolts again. Joe, it's a broken record. Look at the field position. 15-yard line here. I saw men with badges and guns. I like, oh, yeah, you know. It, no, I, I, I thought. It, it says CSU Pueblo Radio on there, doesn't but it? But I, I, I just kind of get a little nervous. Well, yeah. It, it's like when you see the, the roller lights and you're like, wait, I wasn't doing anything. You still get that feeling, though. Well, you know, I missed the timeout. We got the guy out on the field, so we'll just keep it here. But 
you know, you me, me and the law here in Pueblo, we have, we've had some trouble here in the past. So <laughs> different, different deals. Not that I've been in trouble. It's just a trouble that most recent one, I was trying to help them out on a criminal activity. And they didn't want any help? They didn't want to listen to me. No. Right on my block. Caddy cornered to me. They were looking for a guy. I knew where he was hiding. And they didn't want to. <laughs> they didn't want to go. I can tell you where he's hiding. They say, oh, sir, just step back. I go, hey, okay, you want, I have some information for you. No, we don't need it. There's four of them. So they were out with their flashlights looking all over the place in the wrong place. I knew where he was hiding. So they all four leave. An hour later, a guy comes back, gets in the motorhome, drives off. Uh, well. Never to be seen again. <laughs> 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 That's not good. But I was there. I was there. To, he was over across the street behind the dumpster. They were like, look, Barney. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> they, that's more or less what they more like, sir, stand back. And I said, yeah, I got, I, I can tell you where he's at. No, move back. I go, okay. So I stood in the driveway, watched them search for him. They got in their cars. They all four drove off. Well, it's just more paperwork. And the guy came. Yeah, exactly. Then he came back. That's like when I solved our burglary, yeah. when our house got burglary. Yeah. I told I had the web address where the IT address, or IP address, where the guy turned the thing on. Yeah. It's, well, well, we'd have to get a warrant. Well, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Right. <laughs> this sounds like a true crime podcast to me. <laughs> it does. It does. We're ready to go here. That's what you do when you miss the two-minute timeout window. Pass over the middle. Oh, Inflected and almost intercepted. Another pass off no. the hands of Paulus. And that was uh, that was. 100% on Paulus. That ball went right through his mitts. And, Joe, that's one where they had it schemed. He was knifing through the middle of the field. He catches that. He might score. Yeah, he's gone. Well, depending on his speed, because he was in stride. So it's second down and 10. Here's the handoff to Martinez. And, again, there's that saving tackle. They get him around the ankle. They just do not let loose. Third down and six now from the 19-yard line. I have this Denny Green. They are who we thought they are. They are who we thought they were. This what Western what Western's doing to CSU Pueblo is no secret. Straight dropping. They send six. Oh, they blast Fuller back inside the 10 down at the eight-yard line. What a sack! As Fuller is just deposited. On his backside, back inside the 10-yard line. They sent the house from his blind side, and he had no shot. They right just sent more guys. You only had five guys blocked, and they sent six guys. And like you said, Joe, they overwhelmed him on his blind side there. Well, He's again, outnumbered him. Again, Todd Hour defenses. He had that one dialed up, and he called it at the exact right time. Now you're punting from your own end zone. With 6.49 to go here in the fourth quarter, down 30-14. to 14. Getting late in a hurry. Thunderbolts don't have enough people out on the field. Flag is down. They're going to take the delay of game call here. You don't want to burn a timeout because they only had 10 on the field, it looks like. Now the uh, extra man coming out on the field Keith for McCainy. the Thunderbolts is Keith McCaney. That's right. He's going to line up on the left side. You don't want to be that guy on film. So now you're not from your own end zone, from the back of your own end zone. Yeah, just a little step inside the white paint. Takes the snap. Punt is away. They came after him. He got it away. It's going to be handled at the 38-yard line. Hit immediately. Good coverage for the Thunderwolves. And again, Isaiah Joe, Mr. Uh, plus the, the long, long snapper, snapper. Braden Starmer. Number one, Javon Butler. So it's uh, at the 38-yard line, and again, just great field position for Western Colorado. Average starting field position has not even been close in this game to being even. Of course, the starting at the 5 and then at the 25, and then one time at the 18, that kind of skews it in your way, but all the other... Seems like they've always been at midfield or better. I said it earlier in the first half, and I'll say it now. They made it easy for them, Jim. Yeah. Or easier. It was. It was. You'd think it was going to be a dogfight. They made it easy. 
Ball's at the 38-yard line. Nash takes the snap. He hands it around the right side. Thunderbolts have it strung out, pushing him backwards. And going to lose yardage on the play all the way back outside the 40-yard line. Back to the 42-yard line. So a loss of four. It'll be second down and 14. Down to 6.05 to go here in the fourth quarter. 30-14, to 14, Western Colorado on top. This will be the third straight victory in the series for Western Colorado. You know, when you win three in a row, it's not a fluke, it's a streak. Second down and 14. Man in motion to the left. They give it up the middle and hit immediately. Gain of two. Seidenberger with help on the stop there. Also Scipio coming in. Thunderbolts take one of their timeouts. We're going to take one to make up for the one we missed earlier. 5.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. 30-14 to 14 Western Colorado on Fox Sports Pueblo. So you are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Third and 12 for the Mountaineers. They run the ball up the middle. This is Hogan. Gets it down to about the 37-yard line. It'll bring up fourth down now with 5.25 to go. I think you punt the ball away here. You do. You, you, you punt it. You try and pin them back. Even if you don't, they, they got to go the, the 80 yards at the worst. That'd be the worst possible thing. They... And here comes the punt team for the Mountaineers. Punter is Zach Graby. He's a, a long, lanky one, isn't he, for a punter? Six foot four. He's out of uh, Eaton, Colorado. Freshman. Punt is away. Pooches it. High, booming pooch. Hits at the six, backward bow. That was a nice little sandwich there, Joe. You know, he was had a little using, action on it. Using the Pro V1X, just kind of stopped. Boom. Right at the 10 yard line. So, Thunderbolts again, just adding to their woes of field position. 4.39 to go. What did the law want when they came up here? What did they say? They found a credit card. Oh. And they wanted to know if oh, okay. they could somebody make an announcement. And oh, okay. They saw the headsets and thought it was us. Hmm. Not the first time. Bad investigation. They didn't have the right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think <laughs> campus security at CSU Pueblo is the Pueblo County Sheriff's Department. Right. Is it not? It yes. Is, yes. Yes. So I guess that's a different. I don't have any problems with them. Yeah. No, I think they. Dave Lucero, the new sheriff. Good dude. Kirk Taylor, well, he's like a marshal, U.S. marshal. Yeah. Kicking Tommy it, Lee Jones. Kicking it up a notch. It's because he wears cowboy boots. <laughs> that's right. That's what he does. And, you know, Benny, I whiffed on another timeout. Joe and I are just we're just kind of off our game here in the second half. We're, we're, we're like the Thunderwolves. We're just a step it's behind. Just a little off on our timing. There's no zip on it today, I need Jeff. A, I need a floor manager <laughs> up here. There's no to, zip on it today. Somebody to point things out for me. It's well, Joe, it doesn't get any easier next week. Mines comes to town. Well, and, you know, the it's going to be an interesting conversation post-game with Phil Vigil because you go from the frying pan into the fire. Yeah, exactly. And you know that for the, you know, Thunderwolves that have been around a while, and even from last year's club, you had such a great run last year. and Felt good about coming into this year. He had a great effort in the first game. Great effort in defeat at Grand Valley, but it just seems like a million years ago last weekend now. And you wonder if there was that, that little bit of a Grand Valley hangover. There was a lot of travel involved. It was a very physical game. It was a very emotional game. Um, you were riding that high, and maybe reality was just a little bit too much of a check. Well, the physicality was the – that was the most astonishing thing about this Western Colorado. They are big and strong and kind of nasty with an edge out there. And defensively, they come at you from a number of different angles. It just makes it tough. Well, you know, the Lone Star doesn't want to see him anymore. That's for sure. They'd be on top of that conference. 
Green pass right side. Martinez has it, puts his head down, gets forward for about five, perhaps, out to the 15-yard line. It'll be second and five. So it'll be second down now. Martinez in motion to the left side this time. Fuller over the middle, caught. That's Cook. Cook has the first down out to the 25-yard line. Now they're going to mark him back on the umpire tax to the 24. So first and 10 for the Thunderwolves. Cook in the slot to the left along with Paulus. Rakowski and Retzler to the right. They go to Martinez right up the middle. Big opening across the 40. Tries to get to the sideline. Stiff arm across midfield to the 47-yard line. So some signs of life here for the pack. They need a quick score, to say the least. A two-point conversion, onside kick, quick score. On, you know, you get, the, you get the idea. First things first, let's get one in the end zone. Then we can start thinking about all that other stuff. First and ten. Soto into the ball game for the Thunderwolves. Adrian Soto, the senior out of Pueblo County High School. Proud Hornet gains three, second down and seven. Cook comes over to the right side along with Rakowski and Retzleff. Roll the pocket right, up the right sideline. Cook has it, gets a foot down. He's got a first down down to the 31-yard line. Nice grab by Cook on the sideline. Stops the clock with 319. It'll stop it temporarily until they get the ball set. Then that'll wind the clock here. They're having trouble getting everything set. Trying, having trouble getting the football is what they're having a problem doing here. Now they set it. We're ready to go. They wind the clock. Ball at the 31-yard line. Fuller takes the snap. Looks down the middle. He had a man open, but he couldn't get the pass to him. Now just dumps it to Soto at his feet just to get the clock stopped and save the down. So now it'll be second down and 10. He just ran out of time there. Retzleff was breaking open across the middle, but Fuller had already had to roll to the right to avoid pressure. He couldn't stand in there any longer. So second and 10, double wide out each side. Ball's on the right hash. Soto remains at the back. He picks up the blitz. They run the screen to Soto. He dropped it. Looked like the ball might have been deflected a little bit because uh, Adrian just had to kind of make an adjustment there. And the ball fell to the turf. It's almost like his hands were in one spot and looked like the ball might have been just deflected a little bit and he had to readjust and just couldn't pull it in. So now third and 10 for the Thunderwolves from the 31-yard line. Trips to the right, single wide out left. Paulus is all alone to the left side, single coverage. Martinez back in, he rolls right. They look right, pass to Retzlaff, incomplete. Threw it out in front of him instead of right on his numbers. He had sat down in the zone. He would have been short of the first down anyway. Now it's fourth and 10. Well, now it's imperative that you give Fuller enough time to step into the pocket and try to get the ball down the field here. So Rakowski and Retz left to the right. Cook and Paulus wide to the left. Martinez, the lone back. Here comes the blitz. Man, they're all up on the line of scrimmage. They're going to send six, it looks like. Now they adjusted a bit. They're still all up in the line of scrimmage. They send six, delayed blitz, pump fake, pass, batted down at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. It goes over on downs to the Mountaineers. Their defense does it again. Oh, man, they had one of those celebration plays that we always talk about. The two linebackers went up in the air to celebrate the bump, and the one linebacker came down and just blew his left knee out. Oh, you hate to see that. The same play that Nigel Mitchell blew his knee out on a year ago celebrating. This time you have two linebackers go up in the air. They're so excited. They go up and do the chest bump, and the knee went out from under the guy that's on the turf. And I'm afraid his season might be over here. He went down immediately and grabbed his left knee. Writhing in pain. It's one of the big defensive linemen. I think I have the number, but I'm not ready to quite guess it yet 
So we'll keep an eye on it here. But again, it's just on the celebration where you do the old chest bump. You go up in the air, and the one guy came down awkwardly. His left knee just went sideways, and he crumpled to the turf. And it's his left knee. They're working on it here. Kind of reaching down around his ankle now, but I think that's just to do some other tests. Now they're back up around his left knee. But that's what you fear. You, you just... That's the celebration that's in vogue right now, doing the old chest bump. And you get off balance, and that's what happened. We saw it happen to Nigel Mitchell a year ago for the Thunderwolves. He still hasn't recovered from his. He's going to redshirt again this year, try to get back next year. Because it's a full year on the shelf, basically. And again, I cannot positively identify the man on the turf. Trying to get him up now. Player is up. And, yep, it is who I thought it was. It's the Rampart High product. Jaden Young, he's a sophomore out of Colorado Springs. Went to Rampart High School, 6'3", 255-pound sophomore. But he hurt his knee on the celebration. It's his left knee. Cannot put any weight on it at all. He's being helped off by two coaches. And I fear his season's done there, folks. That's just the way it looked. His, his leg just crumpled. He went up, did the old chest bump. I'm not sure if it was him that deflected the pass or the mate he was sub celebrating with, but they batted the ball down at the line of scrimmage. Pass fell incomplete, and they went over and celebrated with each other, did the old chest bump, and his left knee crumpled. All right, ball goes over on downs to Western Colorado. They take over at the 31-yard line. They lead the game 30-14, to 2.56 to go here. And they run it up the middle for a yard. It'll be second down and nine. They'll take the full complement of time here. Joe Servey's made his way down to the field. We did some troubleshooting with our wireless unit here. We always have problems here at the Thunderbolt, the way the stadium is configured with the extra distance of the track down to the field. And uh, we think we finally found a spot that our interview will come off without a hitch. Famous last words. But if not, uh, we strapped a digital recorder to the microphone, so if we can't hear Joe, at least he's going to record everything he gets, and then I'll be able to bring that to you later on as well. Second down and nine. They're going to pitch it around the right side, trying to turn the corner. Seidenberger gets his man down. That's close to a uh, horse collar tackle. Now we've got a Thunderwolf defender crumpled down to the ground, holding his right knee. And he is pounding the turf in disgust here. It's one of the big linemen for the pack. Again, I'll try to get the specs on to see. I think I know who it is, but I'm just not comfortable guessing until you're positive. They're working on his right leg. And they're working up around his right knee. So a couple of big injuries here late in the game, one for each team. Big lineman, yeah, I can pretty much tell who it is for the Thunderwolves. But again, we you don't want to whiff in a situation like this. In case family is listening. And up. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's who I fear, James Turrenton, the uh, junior out of Elk Grove, California. And he's able to put a little bit of weight on it, but not, not now he's just more or less going to hobble over to the sideline. So he got caught up in the wash there on that right side. Definitely a right knee injury, the big fella. 
Junior out of Elk Grove, California. Now he's trying he's trying to put a little weight on it, but it just isn't happening for the big fella. And take him over into the medical tent. Now we've got a timeout taken by the Thunderbolts. We'll take one with them. A minute 52 to go here in the fourth quarter. 30 to 14, Western Colorado on top on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. 30 to 14, Thunderwolves down 16. Well, Joe, the pack did what we said they had to do to start the quarter. They got the stop, then got the touchdown. They just weren't able to build upon it. And you have to do that more than once. They have to do it now. You, every play on defense, the next play, is the most important play of the game right yeah. now. Third and 11, you have to get a stop here. You have to get a stop, force Western State to punt and score. I mean, there's no... Yeah, it's, 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 that what we used to say? it's a moral imperative. <laughs> That's right. It's a moral imperative that they get a stop here, Jim. Yeah, they got to stop them. Then you got to you got to string together four great plays. You yeah. got two touchdowns, two two point conversions, just to get a tie. A lot of time left. Thunderbolts are signs of life. Look better in the second half, obviously. No third and 11 for the Mountaineers from the 42-yard line. And they're going to give it up. The middle flag is down. Yeah, that would cut block or hold. And it's the first down, but it's all going to come back here. As that flag came out immediately, it was the old high-low block in the middle there by Western Colorado. You can't have a guy engage and then hit him down low. Gary Seidenberger's like, he, you heard his helmet hit. Oh, they're calling it on CSU Pueblo. Are they going to call a defensive hold here? Boy, they are pointing at the Thunderwolves. During the play, holding on the defense, oh. A defensive holding. Man, that flag came out in such a hurry, Joe. It was immediately it came out. Why would he be holding? So it marks it all the way down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Well, there goes your moral imperative. Oh, my goodness. Well, we'll be watching that one on the old television replay tonight, see if they, what happened there. That was crazy. Now, if you're Western, you run four plays, just run the ball. Of course, they'll throw it, but you should just run it, milk some clock. Straight drop back. They look right. Pump right. Sacked. Ball's loose on the deck. Thunderwolves had a chance at it. They whiffed. Did they get it on the second try? I don't think so. Let's see. Thunderbolts say they've got it. They're running. Well, now it's a guy coming off the field without his helmet. They did get the ball back. Western Colorado did. That was a bull rush, I'm guessing, by Scipio. It looked like the pack was trying to scoop it instead of just falling on the thing. They were trying to pick it up, and when they whiffed on the pickup, that allowed Western to get back out on top of it. couple of those moments here in the second half. Remember the, the interception that was in the hands of Pittman? Couldn't quite secure it, and there, a fumble. They had the chance. Second down and 13. Now they're going to give it up the middle and going nowhere. That's smart play. That's <laughs> Joe, I was just as tough. Sometimes coaches boggle your mind, don't you? You're, it's just, you know, you're up in the game by 16, and you try a pass play, and you get sacked. You almost screw the whole thing up. By just trying to be cute. Just sort run of, the ball three times, kick of, the field goal. Sort of Bob Stitt from the gun on the wall. <sighs> it's just maddening what they do sometimes. Just overthink it. Third down and 12. Nash takes it straight drop back. Steps up into the pocket, fires over the middle. He's got him, and he dropped it at the two-yard line. It was Montez wide open. Would have had the first and goal. Might have even scored. Now, you know, that's why I always love Joe. He's patting on his chest. Yeah, it's my fault. My yeah, we know it's your fault. You dropped the ball. Well, you don't also, have to tell us. He also had John Nucci, a middle linebacker, in coverage. That's never good. No. That's a getting out schemed right there because you do not want a middle linebacker trying to cover Montez. What a strike, though, by Nash. He stepped right into the pocket and delivered a fastball. And 
Montez just whiffed. Fourth down. Field goal attempt here. 37-yard try. Ball's down. Kick is up. Looked like he hooked that one. Hits the upright. No good. There was your quick hook into the woods, Joe. Yep. You know, your baby draw turned into a snappy. A little sniper. So Thunderwolves still have life. Playing a little blue suede now for the Thunderwolves. Then they stop. <laughs> So here we go, right out to the line of scrimmage, 21-yard line for the Thunderwolves. Double wide out each side. This is the formation they made hay with that first drive of the second half. Fake it, pass left, caught. That's uh, Cook. A cookie with the... Just a quick hitter, and he gets six, seven. Murkowski and Ratzliff are wide to the right. Paulus and Cook to the left. Second down and three. Straight drop back. They give it to Martinez up there. A little nice cut there. He's got the first down. Out across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. First and 10 for the pack. Clock rolls, 12.45 to go. Remember the new timing rules in college football this year. The clock does not stop on first downs now anymore. Keeps on rolling until the final two minutes of the game. Then it'll stop. Straight drop back. They look left, fire left, and not on the same page where Cook Cook went forward. in. Paulus took off, and the ball was thrown like a, yeah. an out. Yeah, forward thought it was going to be a little sideline route. So second and ten. Not all that bad. It stops the clock. Second and ten from the 20 or 32-yard line. Beg your pardon. Martinez in motion to the right. They look right. They come over the middle, and it's Rakowski. He's got the grab across the 35 to about the 38, where forward progress is marked down. So a gain of six. It'll be third down and four. I don't know if it's four down territory yet, but if you get close to the first down here, you almost feel like you got to go for it. Oh, I think it is. Fourth and four, maybe not, but if they get a couple here or three, then I think you've got to think about it. Time dripping away here, though. The Thunderwolves having trouble getting the play call in they want. They come in with a little bit of a heavy package here on third down and four. Extra tight end in the set. I mean, he's not thrown to a tight end tonight. Now they're going to change the play call. Now they set. Fuller takes a snap. He gives it to Martin up the middle, and that goes for no gain. Actually lost two yards on the play. And the coaches next door are making a racket on our wall there, Joe. Yeah, about time to put a, foot, a fist through one. So now we got an injury for Western Colorado. It looks like Kendall Lightfoot is cramping. He's up now trying to trot off. It was almost, Joe, like they were thinking in my mind there where they're saying, well, we're going to go for it on fourth down. We might as well make the fourth down as short as possible, but you don't plan on losing two yards on a running play. No, they Western State blew that. Lightfoot was on the play to blow it up. Paid the price. Well, it was kind of straight. The Thunderbolts came out with the, their version of the heavy package, I guess, two tight ends, and it just, it just looked like a strange formation for third and four. And it, it looked run, and they ran run, and Western State defense run. Western State running to the ball, running in and out. Still got a lot of life in their legs. Thunderwolves are going to punt here now with it being fourth and six. Punt is away. Not a Bad very good punt. one. Handled at the 30, and not much of a return because the punt only went about... 35 yards. Well, Braden Steamer made the play, and he's the long snapper. Jake Ludwig, one of my favorite long snappers at CSU Pueblo history, he used to lead the, want to be one of the team leaders in tackles because he was, you can't touch them. Right. He's just, they, they, that's why they're not such, he used to be a long snapper, was a big physical guy because yeah, they take they a lot of punch on him. Yeah. But now they're, they're, Fast guys. I thought can't Jake, hit them. And I thought Jake might get a shot at it. You know, he got invited to an NFL camp, but I thought he might get it because he was a big guy and a good long snapper. So it's first and 10 Mountaineers from their own 31-yard line. 
Wide out to each side here. Double tight end set. That's a run set all the way here. And they're going to give it up the middle. And there's Seidenberger getting the stop, but able to pull that pile forward for about three. You know, we have noticed that there are no students here today. Yeah, it's uh, eerily silent across the way in the student section. The student section, section is, is empty. And I know it's packed fest tonight, and everybody's probably getting rested up for Waka Flocka. So it almost makes you wonder if they just decide in mass, I say, you know what, we're not coming today. Yeah, I don't <laughs> what, what is it? It's either not all or nothing. A, not even a smattering. So second down and seven here for the Mountaineers. And they give it up the middle. And not much there. But second effort, able to move out across the 35 to the 36. It just keeps that clock bleeding away here this is a proper thing to do for western colorado sure. they, they know that the thunderwolves have to pull off four perfect plays here somewhere down the stretch and you want to make as little a time as possible for them to do it so we go under 10 minutes to go it's 30 to 14 western colorado on top it was 27 to 7 at halftime Thunder was able to get the touchdown to get within 13, but then have given up a field goal and are down 16. Play action. Going to roll the pocket right. Nash, here comes late pressure. Pass incomplete. Looking for the dreaded flag. Oh, and it comes out now all of a sudden. Looking for the flag. Boy, it took forever for it to drop, and then it just kind of dropped in there maybe three seconds after the play was over. What the heck? Called on Eli Pittman. And that was so late, the play was over. Here's another look at it. Well, they don't have, that's the problem the with the television was, the coverage this year. They don't, have I mean, every, they don't have everybody on the screen. Here's a look. Oh, man, that's terrible. That's a brutal call. Well, and don't, don't, He wasn't even close to holding him. You can't referee assumption. You have to referee what you see. Well, and, and not after the play's already been blown dead. Oh, my goodness. So a new set of downs for Western Colorado. That's unbelievable. Here's a handoff around the right side. All that does is eat clock, and then if you're if you're Western Colorado, that's what you want. The Mountaineers are playing this perfectly down the stretch. So it's second down and 12. Yeah, it was all, Pittman was running with the guy, and they both kind of stumbled and fell down. There was no way he was holding him. That's just being over on that side of the field and hearing a bunch of people saying, hey, 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 okay, flag. Second down and 12. Bobble the snap, but get it. And up the middle for two. So it'll be third down and 10 now for Western Colorado. Down to 8.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. It's 30 to 14, Western Colorado on top. You know, this is the same scenario as the last series, but it's three minutes later. They trot up to the line of scrimmage. Going to send two wide outs to the left. Even their wide receivers are big and physical, Joe. You notice that? This is a big, gritty group. Third and nine. Straight drop back. Step up over the middle and all kinds of traffic in the middle. That could have been on the tight end holding the linebacker. Nushi was in coverage there. And Nushi more or less had him screened off. They were trying to get it... To the big one. That's, uh, of course, their tight end, Daniel Parsick. So, fourth down, Western will have to punt the ball away. Well, they learned their lesson from their first punt of the day when they kicked it to Cook. He ran it back to the house. They haven't kicked one to him since. Well, they did they throw that real high one up and they blasted it. Remember back inside the 15 yard line? But for the most part, they've been directional kicks away from him. And they are angling to the right side this time, although he pulls it. It goes right down the middle. Cook with a chance, but he's hit immediately. Good coverage. 
Lucky he held on to that ball. It almost looked like he bobbled it on his way down. Victory David. Yep, his first name is Victory. Makes the stop for Western Colorado. Also Malcolm Wesley over there as well for the Mountaineers. So Thunderbolts again. Joe, it's a broken record. Look at the field position. 15-yard line here. I saw men with badges and guns. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know. It, it, no, I, I, I thought. It, it says CSU Pueblo Radio on there, doesn't but it? But I, I, I just kind of get a little nervous. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's like when you see the, the roller lights and you're like, wait, I wasn't doing anything. You still get that feeling, though. Well, you know, I missed the timeout. We got the guy out on the field, so we'll just keep it here. But, you know, this is, me, me and the law here in Pueblo, we have, we've had some trouble here in the past. So <laughs> different different deals. Not that I've been in trouble. It's just a trouble that most recent one, Joe, I was trying to help them out on a criminal activity. And they didn't want any help? They didn't want to listen to me. No. Right on my block, catty corner to me. They were looking for a guy. I knew where he was hiding. And they didn't want to. <laughs> they didn't want to go, I can tell you where he's hiding. They say, sir, just step back. I go, hey, okay, you want, I have some information for you. No, we don't need it. There's four of them. So they were out with their flashlights looking all over the place in the wrong place. I knew where he was hiding. So they all four leave. An hour later, a guy comes back, gets in the motorhome, drives off. Uh, well. Never to be seen again. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. But I was there. I was there. Tell, he was over across the street behind the dumpster. They were like, look, Barney. Yeah, that's, that's more or less what they more like, sir, stand back. And I said, yeah, I got, I, I can tell you where he's at. No, move back. I go, okay. So I stood in the driveway, watched them search for him. They got in their cars. They all four drove off. Well, it was just more paperwork. And the guy came. Yeah, exactly. Then he came back. That's like when I solved our burglary, yeah. when our house yeah. got burglary. Yeah. I, told, I had the web address where the IT address, or IP address, where the guy turned the thing on. Yeah. It's, well, well, we'd have to get a warrant. Well, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Right. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a true crime podcast. <laughs> it to me. does. It does. We're ready to go here. That's what you do when you miss the two minute timeout window. Pass over the middle. Oh, Inflected and almost intercepted. Another pass off no. the hands of Paulus. And that was. Uh, that was 100% on Paulus. That ball went right through his mitts. And, Joe, that's one where they had it schemed. He was knifing through the middle of the field. He catches that. He might score. Yeah, he's gone. Well, depending on his speed, because he was in stride. So it's second down and 10. Here's the handoff to Martinez. And, again, there's that saving tackle. They get him around the ankle. They just do not let loose. Third down and six now from the 19-yard line. I have this Denny Green. They are who we thought they are. They are who we thought they were. This What Western, what Western's doing to CSU Pueblo is no secret. Straight dropping. They send six. Oh, they blast Fuller back inside the 10 down at the 8-yard line. What a sack as Fuller is just deposited on his backside, back inside the 10-yard line. They sent the house from his blind side, and he had no shot. Great they just sent more guys. You only had five guys blocking. They sent six guys. And like you said, Joe, they overwhelmed him on his blind side there. Well, He's again, outnumbered him. Again, Todd Hour defenses. He had that one dialed up, and he called it at the exact right time. Now you're punting from your own end zone. With 6.49 to go here in the fourth quarter, down 30 to 14. Getting late in a hurry. Thunderbolts don't have enough people out on the field. Flag is down. They're going to take the delay of game call here. You don't want to burn a timeout because they only had 10 on the field, it looks like. Now the uh, extra man coming out on the field Keith for McCainy. the Thunderbolts is Keith McCaney. That's right. He's going to line up on the left side. You don't want to be that guy on film. So now you're not from your own end zone, from the back of your own end zone. Yeah, just a little step inside the white paint. Takes the snap. Punt is away. They came after him. He got it away. Going to be handled at the 38-yard line. Hit immediately. Good coverage for the Thunderwolves. And again, Isaiah Joe, Pittman. Mr. 
Uh, plus the, the long, long snapper, snapper. Braden Starmer. So it's uh, at the 38-yard line, and again, just great field position for Western Colorado. Average starting field position has not even been close in this game to being even. Of course, the starting at the 5 and then at the 25 and then one time at the 18, that kind of skews it in your way. But all the other, seems like they've always been at midfield or better. I said it earlier in the first half, and I'll say it now. They made it easy for them, Jim. Yeah. Or easier. It was, it was you'd think it was going to be a dogfight. They made it easy. Ball's at the 38-yard line. Nash takes the snap. He hands it around the right side. Thunderbolts have it strung out, pushing him backwards. And going to lose yardage on the play all the way back outside the 40-yard line. Back to the 42-yard line. So a loss of four. It'll be second down and 14. Down to 6.05 to go here in the fourth quarter. 30-14, to 14, Western Colorado on top. This will be the third straight victory in the series for Western Colorado. You know, when you win three in a row, it's not a fluke, it's a streak. Second down and 14. Man in motion to the left. They give it up the middle and hit immediately. Gain of two. Seidenberger with help on the stop there. Also Scipio coming in. Thunderbolts take one of their timeouts. We're going to take one to make up for the one we missed earlier. 5.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. 30-14, to 14, Western Colorado on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Third and 12 for the Mountaineers. They run the ball up the middle. This is Hogan. Gets it down to about the 37-yard line. It'll bring up fourth down now with 5.25 to go. I think you punt the ball away here. You do. You, you, you punt it. You try and pin them back. Even if you don't, they, they got to go the, the 80 yards at the worst. That'd be the worst possible thing. They... And here comes the punt team for the Mountaineers. Punter is Zach Graby. He's a, a long, lanky one, isn't he, for a punter? Six foot four. He's out of uh, Eaton, Colorado. Freshman. Punt is away. Pooches it. High, booming pooch. Hits at the six. Backward bow. That was a nice little sandwich there, Joe. You know, he was had a little using, action on it. Using the Pro V1X. Just kind of stopped. Boom. All right, at the 10 yard line. So, Thunderbolts again, just adding to their woes of field position. 4.39 to go. What did the law want when they came up here? What did they say? They found a credit card. Oh. And they wanted to know if oh, okay. they could somebody make an announcement. And oh, okay. They saw the headsets and thought it was us. Hmm. Not the first time. Bad investigation. They didn't have the right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. <laughs> Campus security at CSU Pueblo is the Pueblo County Sheriff's Department. Right. Is it not? It yes, is. yes. So I guess that's a different... I don't have any problems with them. Yeah, no, I think they... Dave Lucero, the new sheriff, good dude. Kirk Taylor, well, he's like a... Marshal, U.S. Marshal. Yeah. Kicking Tommy it, Lee Jones. Kicking it up a notch. It's because he wears cowboy boots. <laughs> That's right. That's what he does. And you know, Benny, I whiffed on another timeout. Joe and I are just we're just kind of off our game here in the second half. We're, we're, we're like the Thunderwolves. We're just a step it's behind. Just a little off on our timing. There's no zip on it today, I need Jeff. A, I need a floor manager There's up here. There's no to, zip on it today. Somebody to point things out for me. It's well, Joe, it doesn't get any easier next week. Mines comes to town. Well, and you know, the... It's going to be an interesting conversation post game with Phil Vigil, and because you go from the frying pan into the fire. Yeah, exactly. And you know that for the 
you know, Thunderwolves that have been around a while. And the, even from last year's club, you had such a great run last year and felt good about coming into this year. You had a great effort in the first game, great effort in defeat at Grand Valley, but it just seems like a million years ago last weekend now. And you wonder if there was that, that little bit of a Grand Valley hangover. There was a lot of travel involved. It was a very physical game. It was a very emotional game. Um, you were riding that high, and maybe reality was just a little bit too much of a check. Well, the physicality was the – that was the most astonishing thing about this Western Colorado. They are big and strong and kind of nasty with an edge out there. And defensively, they come at you from a number of different angles. It just makes it tough. Well, you know, the Lone Star doesn't want to see him anymore. <laughs> That's for sure. They'd be on top of that conference. Screen pass right side. Martinez has it. Puts his head down. Gets forward for about five, perhaps, out to the 15-yard line. It'll be second and five. So it'll be second down now. Martinez in motion to the left side this time. Four over the middle. Caught. That's Cook. Cook has the first down out to the 25-yard line. Now they're going to mark him back on the umpire tax to the 24. So first and 10 for the Thunderwolves. Cook in the slot to the left along with Paulus, Rakowski, and Retzler to the right. They go to Martinez right up the middle. Big opening across the 40. Tries to get to the sideline. Stiff arm across midfield to the 47-yard line. So some signs of life here for the pack. They need a quick score, to say the least. A two-point conversion, onside kick, quick score. On, you know, you get the you get the idea. First things first, let's get one in the end zone. Then we can start thinking about all that other stuff. First and ten. Soto into the ball game for the Thunderwolves. Adrian Soto, the senior out of Pueblo County High School. Proud Hornet. Gains three, second down and seven. Cook comes over to the right side along with Rakowski and Retzleff. Roll the pocket right, up the right sideline. Cook has it, gets a foot down. He's got a first down down to the 31-yard line. Nice grab by Cook on the sideline. Stops the clock with 319. It'll stop it temporarily until they get the ball set. Then that'll wind the clock here. They're having trouble getting everything set. Trying, having trouble getting the football is what they're having a problem doing here. Now they set it. We're ready to go. They wind the clock. Ball at the 31-yard line. Fuller takes the snap. Looks down the middle. He had a man open, but he couldn't get the pass to him. Now just dumps it to Soto at his feet just to get the clock stopped and save the down. So now it'll be second down and 10. He just ran out of time there. Retzleff was breaking open across the middle, but Fuller had already had to roll to the right to avoid pressure. He couldn't stand in there any longer. So second and ten, double wide out each side. Ball's on the right hash. Soto remains at the back. He picks up the blitz. They run the screen to Soto. He dropped it. Looked like the ball might have been deflected a little bit because uh, Adrian just had to kind of make an adjustment there. And the ball fell to the turf. It's almost like his hands were in one spot and looked like the ball might have been just deflected a little bit and he had to readjust and just couldn't pull it in. So now third and 10 for the Thunderwolves from the 31-yard line. Trips to the right, single wide out left. Paulus is all alone to the left side, single coverage. Martinez back in, he rolls right. They look right, pass to Retzlaff incomplete. Threw it out in front of him instead of right on his numbers. He had sat down. In the zone, he would have been short of the first down anyway. Now it's fourth and ten. Well, now it's imperative that you give Fuller enough time to step into the pocket and try to get the ball down the field here. So Rakowski and Retz left to the right. Cook and Paulus wide to the left. Martinez the lone back. Here comes the blitz. Man, they're all up on the line of scrimmage. They're going to send six, it looks like. Now they adjust it a bit. They're still all up in the line of scrimmage. They send six delayed blitz, pump fake, pass, batted down at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. It goes over on downs to the Mountaineers. Their defense 
Does it again. Oh, man, they had one of those celebration plays that we always talk about. The two linebackers went up in the air to celebrate the bump, and the one linebacker came down and just blew his left knee out. Oh, you hate to see that. The same play that Nigel Mitchell blew his knee out on a year ago celebrating. This time you have two linebackers go up in the air. They're so excited. They go up and do the chest bump, and the knee went out from under the guy that's on the turf. And I'm afraid his season might be over here. He went down immediately and grabbed his left knee. Writhing in pain. It's one of the big defensive linemen. I think I have the number, but I'm not ready to quite guess it yet. So we'll keep an eye on it here. But again, it's just on the celebration where you do the old chest bump. You go up in the air, and the one guy came down awkwardly. His left knee just went sideways, and he crumpled to the turf. And it's his left knee. They're working on it here. Kind of reaching down around his ankle now, but I think that's just to do some other tests. Now they're back up around his left knee, but that's what you fear. You you just that's the celebration that's in vogue right now, doing the old chest bump, and you get off balance, and that's what happened. We saw it happen to Nigel Mitchell a year ago for the Thunderwolves. He still hasn't recovered from his. He's going to redshirt again this year. Try to get back next year. Because it's a full year on the shelf, basically. And again, I cannot positively identify the man on the turf. I'm trying to get him up now. Player is up. And yep, it is who I thought it was. It's the Rampart High product. Jaden Young, he's a sophomore. Out of Colorado Springs, went to Rampart High School, 6'3", 255-pound sophomore. But he hurt his knee on the celebration. It's his left knee. Cannot put any weight on it at all. He's being helped off by two coaches. And I fear his season's done there, folks. That's just the way it looked. His, his leg just crumpled. He went up, did the old chest bump. I'm not sure if it was him that deflected the pass or the mate he was sub celebrating with. But they batted the ball down at the line of scrimmage. Pass fell incomplete, and they went over and celebrated with each other, did the old chest bump, and his left knee crumpled. All right, ball goes over on downs to Western Colorado. They take over at the 31-yard line. They lead the game 30-14, to 2.56 to go here. And they run it up the middle for a yard. It'll be second down and nine. They'll take the full complement of time here. Joe Servi's made his way down to the field. We did some troubleshooting with our wireless unit here. We always have problems here at the Thunder Bowl, the way the stadium is configured with the extra distance of the track down to the field. And uh, we think we finally found a spot that our interview will come off without a hitch. Famous last words. But if not, uh, we strapped a digital recorder to the microphone. So if we can't hear Joe, at least he's going to record everything he gets. And then I'll be able to bring that to you later on as well. Second down and nine. They're going to pitch it around the right side. Trying to turn the corner. Seidenberger gets his man down. That's close to a uh, horse collar tackle. Now we've got a Thunderwolf defender crumpled down to the ground, holding his right knee. And he is pounding the turf in disgust here. It's one of the big linemen for the pack. Again, I'll try to get the specs on to see. I think I know who it is, but I'm just not comfortable guessing until you're positive. They're working on his right leg. And they're working up around his right knee. So a couple of big injuries here late in the game, one for each team. Big lineman, yeah, I can 
pretty much tell who it is for the Thunderwolves. But again, we you don't want to whiff in a situation like this. Case family is listening. And up. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It's who I fear. James Turrenton. The uh, junior out of Elk Grove, California. And he's able to put a little bit of weight on it, but not, not now he's just more or less going to hobble over to the sideline. So he got caught up in the wash there on that right side. Definitely a right knee injury, the big fella. Junior out of Elk Grove, California. Now he's, try, he's trying to put a little weight on it, but it just isn't happening for the big fella. I'm going to take him over into the medical tent. Now we've got a timeout taken by the Thunderbolts. We'll take one with them. A minute 52 to go here in the fourth quarter. 30 to 14, Western Colorado on top on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Here's a run around the left side for Western Colorado on third down and six. They get about four on the play by uh, Butler. He'll be short of the first down. Thunderwolves are out of timeouts, so the clock rolls. We're down to a minute 30 to go here. So the pack will get it back here with less than a minute to go. Down 16, 30 to 14. Too many gifts today by the Thunderwolves early on in this game. They were just too much to overcome. Plus the offense just anemic at times. Well, for the most part, anemic in this game. Had one really good drive to start the second half. Fair catch taken by Cook. Their other touchdown, of course, was by Cook. The punt return. We'll uh, talk all about it in the post-game show today. We'll have the highlights for you. Benny Bash has been uh, compiling those all day. We'll also have the Rustler Implement Coaches interview with Phil Vigil after the ball game. Hopefully, wireless uh, system cooperating with us. We did some troubleshooting on it. We think we found a spot on the field and with the Antennas aimed at this the right distance. We think we might be able to get it today. If not, Joe has got a digital recorder. We'll get all those thoughts from the head coach and we'll bring those to you a little later. Either way, we'll have them for you. Here's a straight drop back. Fuller flushed. Steps up now, dishes it off to Martinez. And he gets forward across the 25 to about the 27. He'll gain seven on the play. Clock rolls down to 45 seconds to go. They get the ball set for play here. Thunderbolts out of timeouts. Straight drop back. Pressure off the edge. Fuller steps up. Going for it all. Going down the middle of the field for Cook. Overshoots everybody. Incomplete. So it'll be third down. Third down and three for the Thunderbolts. 28 seconds to go. Trailing at 30 to 14. Post-game show to follow. Rehash this game. Have the interview with Phil V. Hill. Give you the highlights. Plus, look ahead to next week against Colorado Mines. Straight drop back. Stepping up. Firing at right side. Incomplete. That one was thrown like the old 55-foot uh, curveball there that time. So fourth down and three, down to 25 seconds to go. And we got a penalty on the Thunderwolves on a false start here. Yeah, it'll be a lot of self-reflection for the Thunderwolves tonight and tomorrow before they get into the meeting room tomorrow night and start to uh, try to turn the page and get ready for a 
Mines Club that will be ranked the number two in the country. Maybe might even be the number one ranked team in the country. Ferris State tonight is on the road against the uh, Division I team. They're at Montana tonight. So even if they lose, you got to feel like they'd still got to be ranked number one because it'd be against Division II competition. But you never know. Might jump Mines into the number one spot. Western is offside here. Free play for the Thunderwolves. Ball on the left side. Complete the Paulus. He's short of the first down, so that means they got to take the penalty. Only gained eight on that play, or seven on that play when they needed eight. So you have to take the penalty here. Jumping offside was Jaden Armbrust, senior out of Columbine High School. Resides in Littleton, Colorado. So fourth down and two. Low snap. Fuller steps up. He's going for it all up the left sideline, trying to get the Paul. Paul has run out of bounds. The ball lands down the middle of the field on the hash marks, about 20 yards away from him. Flag is down at the 21-yard line. Is it a hold against the Thunderwolves? I think it is. So that means the ball is going to go over on downs. Well, maybe not. No, face mask the call against Western Colorado in the trenches. So it's a 15-yard mark off. So it marked out across the 40 to the 42-yard line. So 12 seconds ago, Thunderbolt's one more play here, maybe two. Look for the play call over to the sideline. Bring Rakowski out of the game. He's gassed. He's just been running 40-yard wind sprints here this series. Play action. Florida rolls right and throws it right at the feet of Soto. Hit him right in the ankle. So clock stops with eight seconds to go. Play call comes in from the sideline. Eight seconds to go. Ball at the 42-yard line, 30 to 14, Western Colorado on top. They're going to run the ball to Soto up the middle and this, you know, call it good, I think. And that will do it. Well-deserved victory for Western Colorado. The Mountaineers come in, and they put a stamp on the opener here in the RMAC season. They defeat the Thunderwolves. That's the third straight win for Western Colorado over CSU Pueblo in the series. Stay tuned. Post-game show is next. Once again, final score, Western Colorado wins it 30-14 to 14 on Fox Sports Pueblo. You Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And welcome back to the Thunderbolt. Let's go down to the field and Joe Servi. All right, down here with head coach Phil Vigil. Coach, tough loss. Uh, early impressions of the game. Didn't play well enough on offense or on special teams to beat a top 25 team today. Three blocks on three punts blocked today. Can't have can't have that happen. Offense was stagnant for the entire game, and and defense was out there for way too long. I thought the defense played well. Um, we just we, they were on the field for way too long today. Got to regroup. Got to go back watch tape. Uh, we've got a really really good opponent in mind's coming next week. We're gonna learn from this thing and we're gonna get better. What do you what do you tell the guys when you meet in the locker room after this game? How do you how do you approach this this game today? Well, we just got to control what we can control. Right now, we got to control our prep. We got to control our our practice habits this week. We got to control how we were going to respond to this. Um, Obviously, you know, we didn't play the way we wanted to play today, and that's a credit to, to Western and, and Coach Baines and what they're doing over there. They do a great job, and we didn't match that today, and, and it showed. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Jim, back upstairs. All right, thank you, Joe. Thanks, Coach V. Hill. Back with more of our postgame show. It all comes your way next on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. 
And welcome back to the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolts go down to defeat today, 30 to 14. Benny Bash has uh, compiled all of our highlights, has them ready to go. Let's get right to it. Thunderbolts just started this game almost uh, like they're sleepwalking. They uh, got the opening kickoff. They went three and out. They went into punt formation, and disaster ensued. Four straight three and out for the Thunderbolts in the first quarter of a game. Remember the first three possessions last week against Grand Valley State were three and outs. Here's punt formation. They blocked the punt. It's on the deck. It's loose. And Western Colorado picks it up. They've got it down to the four-yard line. And that would result in the following first score of the game. They're going to go pistol this time. It's unbalanced to the left. They have a tight end plus a slot back over on the left side of this formation. Two wideouts, one on each side from the pistol. Nash takes the snap. They give it up the middle and right at the goal line. Touchdown for the Mountaineers. The extra point was good, and that made the score 7 to nothing. Thunderwolves then would fumble the ensuing kickoff return by Jordan Jones. They got it at the 25-yard line. They were able to pick up a first down, but the drive stalled. They kicked a field goal to go up 10 to nothing. But then uh, lightning struck for the Thunderwolves. Kick is sent on its way. Low end over end job. Chance for the return here. Cook has it. Nice cut. Across the 30, 35. Makes a man miss. Here we go. 40, 45, 50. He's got one man to beat. He's got blockers out in front. He's down the sideline. Touchdown, Thunderwolves. Just another brick in the wall that was set up for Andrew Cook. 70 yards in all for the punt return. Uh, he's just so exciting to watch, and he got the Thunderwolves back in the ball game. The extra point was good, made it 10-7. to Thunderwolves offense unable to uh, do much after that, though, and uh, Western Colorado then able to take advantage, and they'd put another one on the board. Going to run it left. Thunderwolves had it initially, but trying to string it out, turning the corner to the pylon. Loses the ball. It comes out. Was he in? Touchdown. And the extra point was good. That was a five-yard run by Devin Butler to make it 17 to 7. They would get a field goal to make it 20 to 7. Uh, then they able to get uh, great field position late in the first half, and the second effort was the key here. First and goal from the one. And his players are saying, aren't you glad we, you stayed? Quarterback sneak. Thunder will stuff him. Second effort tries to push in. And does. And touchdown is signaled. Had him Second stopped. effort that time by Nash. They had him stuffed a yard back into the backfield, but then he just kept turning and stuck it across the goal line for the touchdown. And he celebrates. The extra point was good. Made it 27-7 to at that point. That's where we ended the first half. Thunderwolves then come out in the second half. We talked about it during the halftime show, what they had to do. They had to stop Western Colorado on the first drive of the half, which they did. They got the ball back, and the Thunderwolves moved it smartly down the field and got one on the board. Inside the red zone. They like to run him out of this formation. Takes the snap. They give it to Martinez up the middle. Cuts across the five. Touchdown! Great cut there by Martinez on into the end zone, and the Thunderwolves do what they had to do here on this first drive of the second half. Signs of life. And we were referring, of course, to uh, Stephen Kroll, who came into the ball game to play quarterback, talking about him maybe running it out of that situation, but he did hand it off to Martinez. He put it on in the end zone, and at that point, you thought Thunderwolves had a chance. They had it to 27-14. to 14. They had a couple of possessions, maybe to cut into it a little bit further, unable to do so. Western then got a field goal to make it 30-14 to 14 late in the third quarter. Uh, neither team able to get one on the board in the fourth quarter, and Western Colorado wins it. 30 to 14. More of our post game show comes your way next on Fox Sports Pueblo. You are listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And welcome back to the Thunderwolves. Thunderwolves go down to defeat today, 30 to 14. Joe Servi has rejoined us in the booth. We'll get his thoughts here in a moment. Let's give you the first half, or the, not the first half, the game numbers in this game. Uh, first downs, Western Colorado with 19, the Thunderwolves with 13. They had 113 on the ground, 182 through the air, 295 yards total offense on 75 plays. Those aren't gaudy numbers, but you consider the field position they had all day long. They didn't have to go very far on the couple of drives. Thunderwolves, 27 rushes for 67 yards. They were better in the second half. Remember, it was 15 for 15 in the first half. Uh, 218 through the air. Or not, it's their total offense. They had 151 through the air. So 218 yards total offense today 
for the Thunderbolts. Time of possession, 36.09 to 23.51 in favor of Western Colorado. Need a team very good on third downs today. Western 5 of 18, Thunderbolts woeful 4 of 18. Thunderbolts also 0 of 2 on fourth down. Western in the red zone today, 6 of 7. They did miss one field goal when they had it down there in the red zone. Thunderbolts 1 of 1 from the red zone in this ball game. Individual numbers on the ground, Devin Butler, 17 carries, 76 yards, two touchdowns. Hogan, 14 carries for 31 yards. Montez, two for 11. Nash, nine for a net of four. You have to figure in some sack yardage there as well for him. For the Thunderbolts, Martinez, 20 carries for 84 yards. Did have the touchdown. Had a nice 29-yard run late in the game there. Kroll, one carry for seven. Soto, two for five. Uh, Haddad, the uh, punter, actually credited with a rush. Remember, he had the uh, punt he didn't get off when he was sacked, minus 13. Nash today, 17 of 31, 182 yards. He was sacked once. Fuller, 18 of 44, one pick, no touchdowns, 151 yards. He was sacked once in the game. Montez, 5 for 55. Parsick, 3 for 41. Colangelo, 3 for 29. DJ Allen, 1 for 21 for Western Colorado. For the Thunderbolts, Cook, 7 grabs for 50. Martinez, 4 for 32. Rakowski, 3 for 17. Retzloff, 2 for 33. Some of the defensive numbers. Uh, Wyatt Buer with 8 tackles. Cass with 7. Lightfoot, 5. Freeman with 4 for Western Colorado. For the Thunderbolts, Eli Pittman with 9 unassisted tackles in the game. Daniel Bone with 8. Nushi and Hamrick with seven apiece. Hamrick had two sacks in the game. Final score, 30-14, to 14, Western Colorado wins it. Joe, uh, quick thoughts on those numbers. Well, the numbers are ugly, and so is the 1-2 and two record and the 0-1 oh record in the RMAC. You know, two years ago, we might have said it was a fluke, and last year might have been validation. This year, when you win three in a row, it's a streak. And... No one said it publicly, but I guarantee you this game was personal for Jazz Bay. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And, you know, he was one of the three finalists interviewed for this head coaching job, and he didn't get it. And and I think he wanted to prove something, especially on their home field, because they, they, they were gracious enough, and the commissioner was gracious enough to switch that so they wouldn't play this on a soccer field. I could see the, the frustration in Phil Hill's eyes, because this was not the same team that was – in Grand Rapids, Michigan last week. Yeah, battling it out. It just was yeah. not the same effort. It was not the same intensity. It was not the same heart. And I think that that kind of shocked everybody on the field. And, again, you don't get to lick your wounds because you got mines coming to town. Yeah. And in one week, they'll be here. And if, you, if you're not ready, it's going to be ugly. That's for sure. We're going to take a time out here. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about today's game. Look ahead to next week. That all comes your way next on Fox Sports Pueblo. Every You're listening to CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head to the field and join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. And welcome back to the Thunderbolt. Thunderwolves go down to defeat today, 30-14. to 14. Elsewhere in the RMAC today, Mines, next week's opponent, defeated Adam State 70-7. to 7. New Mexico Highlands went on the road, one in Durango today, 31 to 17. Mesa on the road as well, up in Rapid City, defeated South Dakota Mines, 38 to 30. Shadron State and Black Hill State, they play tonight in the old backyard brawl up there. In uh, the game being played in Spearfish tonight. Other games in the old top 25. Let's take a tour around the country, shall we? Uh, Games in progress right now. Florida A&M over West Florida, three to nothing early on. U India, fourteen to nothing lead. Former playoff opponent of the Thunderwolves. They lead Wayne State in at halftime, fourteen to nothing. Lenore Ryan, a forty-nine to nothing lead over Erskine. What do you think the Erskine uh, mascot is, Joe? The Erskine. Maybe the skeletons or something like that. It looks something like that. The pirates. It could be a pirate. It could be. All right, Virginia Union in the second quarter leads Livingstone 21-13. Slippery Rock at halftime with Millersville tied up 21 apiece. Might want to catch that one on the live stream there. Tusculum. <laughs> Some of these names we get in Division II. Tusculum. Tusculum. You know, Erskine is the Flying Fleet. The Flying Fleet, that's nice. Wingate trails at halftime to Tusculum 14-7. Delta State, Mississippi Valley just underway. No score there. 
First quarter score, Harding over Arkansas, Monticello 21-7. Emporia State, they lead 17-0 over Northeastern State. They had the big victory last week over uh, uh, Northwest Missouri, remember? Um, Wachita Baptist, they lead Southern Arkansas 14-7. Southern Arkansas, wasn't, our, uh, wasn't uh, Ben Greenberg at Southern Arkansas? I think it was at Arkansas State. Arkansas State, one of those Arkansas schools he was there for a while for a cup of coffee. Uh, Northwest Missouri and Fort Hayes, they're uh, just getting underway. Ferris State also just getting underway at Montana. Angelo State is playing Central Washington. Here are the finals today from Division II. Seventh-ranked Bemidji, Bemidji State over Winona State, 36-10. Shepard defeats California, 44-34. Third-ranked Pitt State. Oh, what a game this must have been over Central Missouri. 38-37, the final Pitt State wins it. I wonder if Central Missouri went for two at the end and didn't get it. The Gorillas. I used to love it when they come in and played basketball back. When they all, remember the old Great Plains Athletic Conference? Well, and they were that orange and yeah. no, red and yellow. Yeah, and then the teacher college, Emporia State used to come up here yeah. as well. It was fun. Fort Hayes was in that league. Grand Valley, they uh, continue their winning ways. They defeat number 23, Assumption, today, 43-7. IUP over Shippensburg, 49 to 14. Number 15, Benedict over Lane, 54 to 7. Minnesota State, former playoff opponent of the Thunderbolts, a team the Thunderbolts defeated for the national title back in 2014. They defeated Minot State today, 52 to 25. Saginaw Valley, the 25th ranked team in the country, loses to Truman State, 21 to 7. And the other top 25 game is, of course, this one. And the Thunderbolts will drop out of the poll now. Let's go to the big boy side of the house. Uh, Air Force, a winner last night in their ball game over Utah State. Northern Colorado was getting waxed earlier. Let's see what the final is going to be there. I'll have to dig down deep to find that. I know, I know they went down to defeat. They lost to Washington State. Yes, that's it. it by a lot. Opponent, by a lot. 57-14 uh, to 14 was the final there. Of course, CU and CSU tonight at 8 from Boulder. Go Rams. All right, South Florida and Alabama, they're midway through the fourth quarter. Get this, it's 10-3 to Alabama over South Florida. <laughs> Alabama does have the football. I don't have the game tracker on. We'll just have to see how that one ends up. Iowa over Western Michigan, 41-10. to UCLA leads North Central. Or that North Carolina Central? Nice scheduling there for uh, UCLA. Nice, worthy opponent. 59 to nothing. they lead them there. Ohio State over Western Kentucky, 63-10. to Another brilliant schedule. Washington State, as we mentioned, over Northern Colorado. And you got to Washington State. What are you playing Northern Colorado for? Uh, to get a win. A win. Washington over Michigan State. You can almost see this one coming today with the, the Mel Tucker All-Stars up there at Michigan State. 38 to nothing. They're getting waxed. Florida State over Boston College, 31 to 29. Missouri on a last second, 61-yard field goal defeats K-State today, 30 to 27. Penn State over Illinois. LSU over Mississippi State, Utah over Weaver State, Notre Dame defeats Central Michigan 41 to 17. Duke, they look good this year. They lead, uh, they beat Northwestern 38 to 14. North Carolina over Minnesota 31 to 13. Oklahoma over Tulsa. Georgia comes back and defeats South Carolina. They trailed by double digits early on in that game. Oregon State over San Diego State 26 to 9. Early score: Tennessee over Florida 7 to nothing. Some other games tonight: Michigan and Bowling Green, Ole Miss, Georgia Tech, Wyoming and Texas. That could be interesting. Down there in Austin, Oregon, and Hawaii as well. And, of course, we uh, mentioned it, Colorado and Colorado State the other day. Joe, your final thoughts on this one? It's ugly. And, you know, the sad part is, is I told you before we went on the air, I had a really good feeling about CSU Pueblo today. I thought they were going to break the streak. And what we saw last week was that's the best I felt after a loss ever when it came to CSU Pueblo. And what we saw on the field today was nothing like the – team we saw a week ago I, it didn't resemble it at all the defense at times played stellar but they were asked to do a lot but they were asked to do a lot last week as well but I did not see anything today that resembled last week and I'm shocked by that yeah the offense just it, it just got from the get-go when you botch the ex the special teams play you get a punt blocked and then you fumble the kickoff return you and know, just you start looking at it both you look yeah. and, you, know, you start getting a little skittish and yeah. and you know that but and before you know, before you go any farther, you have to credit Western yeah. State. They know what to do when it comes to games like this, and they know how to play CSU Pueblo. They know how to play defense. Their kids are tough, 
and they're well coached. Yeah, they played to their personality, didn't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Yeah, they know what they do. They knew what they do well, and they did it well today, and they will continue to do it well. You get that Absolutely. feeling. Absolutely. So you got to tip your gas. We like Jazz Baines, and, and we like Todd Hour, and, and, and Western State's always been good to us, so you, you tip your hat. All right. Thunderbolts be back in action next Saturday, right back here at the Thunderbolt. one thirty with the pregame show, 2 o'clock kickoff against Colorado Mines. They'll be in town here to take on the pack. We remind you we'll have the wrestler implement Phil V Hill show that comes your way on Thursday, six o'clock from Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. Join Joe along with myself and the head coach Phil V Hill, and uh, we invite you to come out and enjoy that. It's always pint night, so you can come out and get a three dollar pint at uh, and watch uh, the show, or listen to the show while you're watching the game on the TV. The NFL game will always be there, so it's always a fun night at the Thunder Zone. All right, that's going to wrap things up. We thank uh, Ben Greenberg, who's the sports information guy here at CSU Pueblo, for all of his hard work. Big day for him today. Two soccer matches plus this game. It's a heavy lifting, but he got it done today. Uh, Paul Plinsky is the athletic director. My partner is Joe Servi. Our producer and engineer today has been Benny Bash. My name is Jim Brooks, reminding you the final score here today. Thunderwolves go down to defeat. Western Colorado beats them 30-14. to 14. Until we talk to you Thursday evening from the Thunder Zone, for my partner Joe Servi, for Benny Bash, this is Jim Brooks bidding you good afternoon.